Welcome to Mystic Realms Recap. Links are in the description below. Please show some love of the author and me. On to the show. In such a situation, necromancers would have to either secretly hide or flee in all directions. How could they build a psychic tower so blatantly? Even the necromancers of the Darkness Shrine would rarely build psychic towers because they did not want to intensify the conflict between the two forces let alone ordinary necromancers. The Double Realm Psychic Tower could be considered the ultimate form of psychic towers. Apart from harsher construction requirements, the materials needed would be enough to drain the riches of any wealthy and powerful necromancer. Most importantly, it would also require the sacrifice of a large number of lives. Every inch of the land of the Psychic Tower would be flowing with endless blood only if a large number of lives was sacrificed in a massive amount of energy was infused with the psychic tower to allow the psychic tower to evolve into a double realm psychic tower. Hence, in the countless years since the Dark Age, there had been no more than five psychic towers with verifiable evidence, and the double realm psychic tower still remained a legend. Although those conditions were extremely harsh, the massive power brought about by the double realm psychic tower after successful evolution would be enough to make any necromancer go mad. The evolution of the psychic tower into the double realm psychic tower was akin to the advancement from the legendary realm to the sanctuary realm. It was absolutely a qualitative improvement. The double realm psychic tower was known under that name because its power traversed the two realms of the living and the dead. It could open the realm of the undead creatures for the necromancers and continuously draw the purest death aura from the realm of the undead. With the help of the incomparably pure death aura, the necromancers could not only increase their strength rapidly, but also greatly increase their chances of stepping into the sanctuary realm. Explore Todd T. stories at No. L. Ben. C. M. At the same time, as long as a necromancer put himself within the range of influence of the double realm psychic tower, his combat power would also be elevated to a terrifying level. Regardless of whether he was using necromagic in battle or summoning his undead servants, his combat power could be increased by leaps and bounds. If he was an apprentice in necromagic, he would be able to exert combat power that was at the peak of level 19. If he was a level 20 necromancer, he would be able to exert combat power that was at the peak of the legendary realm. In addition to those roles, the most important function of the double realm psychic tower was to save the life of the necromancer and allow him to share his life with the double realm psychic tower. As long as the double realm psychic tower did not collapse, the necromancer would not die. Even if it did collapse, the necromancer would still be able to send his soul fire into the realm of the undead and truly become one of them. Hearing Archbishop Martin's shriek of terror, everyone looked frightened as well. Although the double realm psychic tower only existed in legends, they did not think that Archbishop Martin would make a mistake. Everyone knew that in the world of Anril, the brilliant shrine probably understood necromagic better than most necromancers. Archbishop Martin, I think it might be necessary to make a correction. I'm afraid there should be 36 double realm psychic towers here. At this moment, Linlis' expression had also grown much more sullen. Even though he had long predicted that things would not go smoothly, the appearance of the Double Realm Psychic Towers was still somewhat beyond his expectations. At this point, Osric's control over the Sky Castle had probably reached a terrifying extent. A psychic array that was formed from 36 psychic towers was already extremely terrifying. What kind of power would a psychic array formed from 36 Double Realm Psychic Towers be like? Truth be told, Linley, could not imagine it at all. If the towers had been activated to form double realm psychic towers, when he'd explored the Sky Castle in the past, probably none of the people at that time would have been able to escape 36 towers. Upon hearing that number, almost everyone couldn't help but gasp in shock before beginning to suspect something. It was a double realm psychic tower that existed in legends, not a random tower built of stone. Having one was already incredibly exaggerated. How could there be 36 of them? Archbishop Martin did not dare to hesitate for a single moment. He chanted a few prayers, and a solar sphere darted upwards into the sky from his hands, after which it suddenly split and flew in all directions in the sky castle. Having stepped into the sanctuary realm using the laws of light and darkness, Linley had a good grasp of the holy light magic. He knew that Archbishop Martin was displaying the holy guidance, which was a form of holy light magic that was used to specifically detect all kinds of unholy energies and auras like those of undead creatures. In fact, if it was possible, Linley wished that he was wrong. However, there were many things that could not change because of one's will. Things did not always go the way people wanted. As the saying went, more often than not things did not go according to the plan. As expected, after casting the holy guidance, Archbishop Martin, who suffered some backlash, turned pale. Everyone had been watching Archbishop Martin's reaction with concern and did not ask any questions because they had already gotten an answer in their hearts. This time, 
they had even developed the desire to die. 36 double realm psychic towers were absolute death. One double realm psychic tower meant that there was a necromancer, who had incredibly powerful combat power, and would almost never die in combat. Yet 36 of them popped up all at once. That was an impossible phenomenon, even in the most terrifying nightmares. 36 necromancers with incredible combat power were already terrifying existences that were far beyond Inion's imagination. However, the 36 double realm psychic towers formed a psychic array. Anyone had enough reason to believe that, that it was definitely not an ordinary psychic array. The power it contained was probably more than 100 or 1000 times greater than that of an ordinary psychic array. After seeing the daunting situation that they were currently facing, almost every member of the expedition couldn't help but wail in despair. It was simply overbearing. How could the Immortal King be that perverted? Not to mention the amount of precious materials needed to build the Double Realm Psychic Tower. There had definitely been an unimaginable number of lives that got sacrificed during the construction. Even if all the humans of the three human kingdoms were sacrificed, they would not be enough to build so many Double Realm Psychic Towers. However, at this moment, it was no longer possible for the expedition to consider that much. The black clouds in the sky had connected to form one, shrouding the entire sky castle in darkness. Everyone could feel the earth-shattering changes that happened to the space in the instant that the black clouds enveloped them. Although the sky castle was originally dead silent as well, it had only given them some slight psychological pressure. However, after being shrouded in darkness, the sky castle had completely become a dead city. It was an undead domain filled with death aura. The members of the expedition, who were standing right in it, could even clearly feel that the death aura was seeping into their souls and slowly eroding their vitality. 36 psychic towers formed a massive psychic array. What kind of changes would the 36 double realm psychic towers make to the psychic array? Lin Li already had an answer in his heart. A psychic array merely gathered a large amount of death aura to create an undead domain that would be suitable for undead creatures. However, the psychic array in front of him had a portion of the undead world projected in it. The boundless undead creatures seemed like a dam that had burst as they swarmed madly towards the expedition from every direction. Every street was crowded with ugly undead creatures as if it was an undead fest. Similarly, there were also countless undead creatures that surged out from the back to surround the entire expedition. The ones rushing to the front were the skeletal warriors which were forever the cannon fodder of the undead creatures. However, the skeletal warriors were clearly not as pathetic as the ones that people had generally seen. They were clad in bright armor, with shields and swords in their hands and bones, that were like white jade. They were clearly thin skeletons, but those skeletal warriors seemed to give off a terrifying aura, as if they were elites that had gone through countless battles. There were naturally many hell gulls, and skeletal mages at the back of the skeletal warriors. However, they were obscured from view, as cannon fodder, the skeletal warriors were already that ferocious. Hence, the higher-ranked hell ghouls and skeletal mages were definitely not to be underestimated. There was a large number of vampires, in the form of bats packed densely above the army of the undead like a flock of migrating birds. The membrane wings of each bat were glittering with silver magic symbols, and they were at least level 15 and above. The vampires hovered in the sky, constantly emitting sharp and piercing shrill cries that made everyone feel like their eardrums were about to burst. However, even more terrifying was that there were massive figures flying behind the vampires, all of which were top existences among the undead creatures. They were the humorous weirms. The weakest of humorous weirms were at least at the legendary level, but dozens or hundreds of them had appeared. Even if they were in another environment, the humorous weirms would be enough to cause a huge problem for the expedition. However, the humorous weirms were being shielded by the psychic array. Hence, the entire space became a projection of the world of the undead which made the undead creatures even more powerful. The humorous weirms were even more terrifying there. Soon, the white torrent formed by the undead creatures gathered together and attacked the expedition that was right in front of them, igniting the battle immediately. Faced with such a situation, it would be impossible to escape. Despite feeling hopeless and desperate, the expedition seemed to have no other choice but to fight with all their might. In the Brilliant Shrines team, the Holy Light Knights did not rush out like before. Instead, they united to form a battle formation around the priests, and the melodious and high-pitched Holy Light battle song began sounding in the air above the team. The priests began to continuously cast powerful Holy Light magic spells at the undead creatures, causing rays of Holy Light to continuously fall into the tide formed by the undead creatures. The power of light was indeed worthy of being a natural enemy of undead creatures. Each pillar of light was as silent as the rays of sun, but after it fell, all the undead creatures within the range of the power of light immediately went up in white flames of purification. No matter how menacing the undead creatures were, 
They all turned into a pile of ashes in the blink of an eye because of the flames. However, the people of the brilliant shrine did not become complacent because of that tiny success. Instead, their faces grew even more sullen because they knew very well in their hearts what kind of power the holy light magic that they were casting should possess. The seemingly powerful holy light magic that was now purifying the undead creatures had actually decreased in power by more than half. Besides, what was even more horrifying to the people of the brilliant shrine was that they discovered that it had become extremely difficult for them to obtain the power of light through prayers. It was as if it had turned from a large river to a small stream. It seemed that they were facing the threat of their flow getting broken too. That was too frightening. They were facing endless undead creatures but they could not replenish their power of light. They could only continuously deplete their own power. So what would happen when their power ran out? Would they still be able to survive? On the other side, the team from Rotterdam Kingdom had similarly begun attacking as well. Their 20 alchemy colossuses were facing the raging army of undead creatures. Every ray of mana would blast head on into the tide of undead creatures and form a huge hole in the tide in the blink of an eye. However, in another instant, the hole would be filled by the undead creatures again. The problem that the team from the Rotterdam Kingdom was facing was far more urgent than that of the Brilliant Shrine. The alchemy colossuses were powered by magical crystals. At that rate of depletion, it probably would not be long before the alchemy colossuses truly became a pile of scrap metal. Although there were other professions amongst the members of the Rotterdam Kingdom's team, it was difficult for them to change the situation. This time, the team from the Tower of Dusk could not be as relaxed as before now that they were facing the menacing undead army. Hence, everyone had slipped into battle mode. The mages quickly formed a magic net array, and the brilliant magic light shone incessantly with the continuous casting of high-level magic spells. They gathered to form a massive magic storm that swept towards the army of undead creatures with groundbreaking power. The skeletal warriors, hell gulls, skeletal mages, and other undead creatures might have been strengthened by the undead domain, but in the face of the magic storm, formed by the mages of the Tower of Dusk, they became weak and fragile. They were unable to survive for even a second in the sweeping magic storm, as they instantly shattered into the smallest of particles. Under the command of their leader Alan, the mages cast magic spells while slowly changing their attacking position as if they were using a water hose to wash soil off the ground, causing the massive magic storm to look like it was sweeping. Under such attacks, the front of the army of undead creatures was being removed layer by layer as countless undead creatures turned into ashes that were scattered away. At the same time, the legendary powerhouses of the Tower of Dusk profusely cast their most powerful offensive spells. Ufalusi summoned the humorous Weirms, and he hovered in midair above the Tower of Dusk's people together with the vampire Norfler, and attacked the hordes of vampires that were flying towards them. Ufalusi was already a level 24 lich. Although he was still some distance away from the pinnacle, it would not be too much to say that he was at the peak of the legendary realm. The crimson humorous weirm that he was riding was made up of skeletons, from Prince Berhir's mausoleum. It had also reached the peak of level 23. The power of that combination was absolutely no less than the combined power of four legendary powerhouses of the current expedition. Ufalusi did not summon his own army of undead creatures, because none would be able to compare to the necromancer that had the double realm psychic tower, be it in terms of quantity or quality. However, even if he only counterattacked with necromagic, Ufalusi's abilities would definitely not be reduced. He cast all sorts of necromagic spells that included erosion, debilitation, confusion, and many others, forming a terrifying death cloud. Those vampires couldn't help but move to the side and fall onto the ground while screaming. On the other hand, although Norfler could not summon a humorous weirm like Ufalusi could, what he achieved in the same time was no worse than what Ufalusi accomplished. After consuming the potion that was refined with ice blast Weirm Cinder's blood, the bloodline in Norfler's body had long broken through the boundary of race. That was probably an unprecedented phenomenon in the history of Anril. After all, the ice blast Weirm Cindera was a true big shot of the ancient Weirms, and the bloodline in his body was comparable to that of the dragon aspect. Norfler's bloodline, which evolved from that foundation, was actually purer than an ordinary Weirm's bloodline. It was almost on par with the ancient Weirm's. Due to his bloodline, his body had even shown signs of becoming dragonized. Not only could he exhibit extremely pure menace of the dragon, his strength and defensive power were not inferior to those of a real Weirm, either. Although he was only at the peak of level 23, his true combat power had long surpassed that of others who were at his level. Norfler, who had also flown into the air like Ufalusi, was holding the pair of retribution daggers inlaid with large gems of curse. The cloak behind him had turned into a pair of huge membranous wings with countless golden runes of magic that were slowly flowing like blood, 
while the menace of the dragon surged in the air. No one could see his body moving at all. All they could see were shadows darting out of his body one after another towards the vampire bats that were flying around in the sky. The scene that followed was that of countless bats flying and falling onto the ground like rain. The two other forces that were secretly observing the strength of the Tower of Dusk were shocked to see that scene and they almost couldn't believe their eyes. Looking at the combat power displayed by the mages of the Tower of Dusk, they felt that it was impossible that they had been nurtured by a force that had been established only for a few years. They had a tacit chemistry and coordination, which was even more perfect than those of a team that had undergone more than a decade of training. In the face of such a team of mages, it would perhaps be difficult even for legendary powerhouses to gain the upper hand. There were also the two undead servants, which were originally looked down upon by the two other forces. No one took them seriously because of their disgust and disdain for undead creatures, and also because they were lowly servants. However, no one expected the undead servants, who were extremely lowly in the eyes of everyone, to actually possess such terrifying strength. The world was insane. Since the start of the battle with the army of undead creatures, the Tower of Dusk had probably destroyed several times more undead creatures than the combined numbers of the Brilliant Shrine and the Rotterdam Kingdom, and that within just a few moments, there was no need to calculate that at all. They could tell from the changes in the battlefield that the teams from the Brilliant Shrine and the Rotterdam Kingdom still could not stop the army of undead creatures from advancing despite having done their best. On the other hand, the Tower of Dusk was in greater contact with the army of undead creatures than the two forces combined, but not only had the undead creatures, not taken a step closer to them, they were actually retreating. However, it was not an actual retreat, but an illusion created by the destruction of a large number of undead creatures that showed how terrifyingly efficient the Tower of Dusk's team was at destroying undead creatures. Originally, the people of the Rotterdam Kingdom did not take Lin Lee and the Tower of Dusk seriously at all. Even though Lin Lee had easily gotten rid of the terrifying elemental dragon, in the eyes of the people of the Rotterdam, he was just strong as an individual. It didn't mean that the Tower of Dusk was a force that deserved to be treated seriously. However, after seeing the Tower of Dusk's team take action in full swing, and the horrifying combat power that they had displayed, shock was written all over the faces of Donald and Prince Canber. Although they felt deep down that the Tower of Dusk was definitely not comparable to the Rotterdam Kingdom in terms of strength, the strength displayed by the Tower of Dusk, in the current situation was enough to pose a threat to their own team. Although Donald and Canber were equally shocked to see such a situation, they did not share the same impression. Donald was feeling thankful and fortunate that he had reached a cooperation agreement with the Tower of Dusk. Otherwise, he might not be able to survive in the face of the army of undead creatures that they were fighting now. In fact, if they had been without the help of the Tower of Dusk, they probably would not have been able to overcome the ordeal with the elemental dragon just now. Even if they had tried to do so forcefully, it would have definitely hurt the team's vitality. Of course, Donald was also much more curious about the origin of the Tower of Dusk, as the strength they displayed did not seem like that of a small, nameless local force at all. If they were still considered a small local force with such incredible strength, the world outside the Rotterdam would be too daunting. On the other hand, Prince Canber regretted his choice to agree to explore the Sky Castle, together with the Tower of Dusk. If not for the presence of the Tower of Dusk, the Elemental Dragon probably would not have attacked them and thus they would not have been forced into the desperate situation that they were currently in. Even if they passed this, would the Tower of Dusk really allow them to take away the most precious treasures? In the past, Canber was not worried at all, as he simply saw the Tower of Dusk as a pathetic force that would be leeching off them. He simply perfunctorily accepted the cooperation after considering the Brilliant Shrine's power. However, after looking at the Tower of Dusk's power now, Canber couldn't help but be worried. No matter how powerful the Rotterdam Kingdom was, while the grass grew, the horse starved. Could this simply be a conspiracy of the Brilliant Shrine? Faced with the double pressure brought about by the oppression of the army of undead creatures, and the incredible power displayed by the Tower of Dusk, Canber could not stop his imagination from running wild. If Archbishop Martin knew what Canber was thinking, he would definitely cry and wail about being wronged. Although he had some friendship with Linley, and had personally gone to the Tower of Dusk to invite Linley over once, he did not have a good understanding of the Tower of Dusk's power. He valued Lin Li greatly previously mainly because Pope Rosario was certain that the young mage Lin Li was the son of the Holy Light. The status of the son of the Holy Light in the Brilliant Shrine was no less than that of the Pope, and in terms of the teachings of the Brilliant Shrine, Pope Rosario was the mouthpiece for Holy Light in Anril, while the son of the Holy Light was the inheritor of the Holy Light in this world. Hence, Archbishop Martin, or the vast majority of the senior executives of Brilliant Shrine, valued Lin Li, and not the Tower of Dusk. In fact, at this juncture, 
Archbishop Martin was just as shocked after seeing the strength displayed by the Tower of Dusk as the people of the Rotterdam. Besides, the people of the Rotterdam might treat the Tower of Dusk as an ancient force that had remained hidden since the Dark Age. That would be more or less an acceptable explanation. However, Archbishop Martin, who had also participated in the presidential inauguration ceremony of Lindley a few years ago, was well aware that the Tower of Dusk had yet to exist a few years ago. They had developed only for several years. Hence, Archbishop Martin was actually in greater shock and disbelief than the people of the Rotterdam. As a senior executive of the Brilliant Shrine, he was well aware of how much energy one had to put in to develop and nurture such a strong force. Besides, when the Tower of Dusk was first established, they were not quite popular in the breezy plains. They couldn't have begun nurturing those mages right from the start, either. Actually, the Tower of Dusk probably only took about two years to groom and nurture those mages, which was rather frightening. Despite having only spent two years or so, the mages that they nurtured were not inferior in the slightest to those elites that had been nurtured for over a decade. Could those mages be elites? However, no matter what, Archbishop Martin was not as worried about the amazing competency of the Tower of Dusk as the people from Rotterdam. Archbishop Martin thought that he knew Lindless' temperament quite well, and now that everyone was facing such a desperate situation, wouldn't they have more hope of surviving if the Tower of Dusk was stronger? Don't let those filthy bastards come close. You guys are the devotees of Holy Light and the defenders of the doctrine of the Holy Light. Don't be defeated. After seeing Lin Lis' impressive dominance when killing the elemental dragon, Jeremiah no longer fantasized about making Lin Lee look bad to salvage his pride. However, he still hoped to save some face through other means, such as showing the brilliant combat power of the Holy Light Knights under him. Of course, Jeremiah also saw how strong the mages of the Tower of Dusk were, be it in terms of coordination or the battle formations that they had. In fact, they were much stronger than the priests of the Brilliant Shrine. However, those priests were under Archbishop Martin. Even if they embarrassed themselves, it would only affect Archbishop Martin. He was the leader of the Holy Light Knights. After the initial conflict with the Tower of Dusk, Prince Jeremiah was still indignant. After all, the Holy Light Knights under him had not got to exhibit the Holy Light Battle Song and the combat strength they displayed had been less than half of what they were capable of. He was completely confident that as long as the Holy Light Knights used the Holy Light Battle Song, they would be able to defeat the Knights of the Tower of Dusk. He did not believe that there was any other kind of knight battle formation in Anril that could compare to the Holy Light Battle Song of the Brilliant Shrine. However, Jeremiah now knew that that young president of the Tower of Dusk was not to be trifled with, hence, he naturally wouldn't be so silly as to provoke him again and the best solution would be to use the battle with the undead creatures to fully display the strength of the Holy Light Knights and suppress the Tower of Dusk's Knights in terms of dominance. Under Jeremiah's command, the Holy Light Knights indeed exerted combat power that was above average. The Holy Light Battle Song was like a giant grinder that mercilessly crushed all the intruding undead creatures into bits and pieces. However, when he looked at the Tower of Dusk smugly, he got a great shock that caused his jaw to drop in the direction that the Tower of Dusk was facing. The army of undead creatures was almost blocked by the attacking range of the offensive spells. Regardless of quantity, all of the undead creatures that touched the range of offensive spells would be instantly blown to pieces by a terrifying magic storm. However, in the end, the Tower of Dusk could not take charge of the entire battlefield. The team from the Brilliant Shrine had already moved to the flank of the Tower of Dusk's team. Now that the army of undead creatures was in front of the team of the Brilliant Shrine, it would naturally threaten the safety of the neighboring Tower of Dusk's team as well. Lin Li needed the mages to maintain absolute suppression at the front. Hence, he sent the Death Knights out at this juncture. Under the lead of a retribution knight, 40 Holy Death Knights formed the Infinite Massacre battle formation and charged to the army of undead creatures in between the Tower of Dusk and the Brilliant Shrine. The Infinite Massacre battle formation was originally a battle formation that Death Knights were born with, similar to the Holy Light battle song. It could also create a killing domain. However, the ones using the Infinite Massacre battle formation were now Death Knights that possessed divine power. Hence, while the entire battle formation was filled with deadly intent, it was also shrouded in a layer of holy light, which made it seem inexplicably peculiar. Shrouded by the killing domain, not only did the undead creatures have to suffer from the damage it dealt, they also had to bear the damage done by the purification of divine power. Hence, it could be considered a double blow. Even though the Holy Light Knights outnumbered the Death Knights, the latter's efficiency at killing undead creatures was not worse at all. More than 40 Holy Death Knights were charging back and forth in the boundless army of undead creatures and killing them like a high-speed meat grinder. They also harvested their soul fires. Besides, the massacre conducted by the Holy Death Knights 
not only ensured the safety of the teams at the flanks of the Tower of Dusk, they also relieved some of the pressure on the Tower of Dusk's team to a certain extent. Seeing such an astonishing performance by the Knights of the Tower of Dusk, Jeremiah couldn't help but feel dejected and discouraged. They only had 40 Death Knights, but their combat power was no worse than the Holy Light Knight's performance under him. If he deployed only 40-odd Holy Light Knights, they wouldn't be able to do what the team from the Tower of Dusk had managed to do. It seemed that the outcome of the battle back then was not that inexplicable. Of course, while feeling a bit dejected, Jeremiah also felt thankful for the fact that he had not provoked the Tower of Dusk's team or told his Holy Light Knights to spar with them. Otherwise, he would have embarrassed himself greatly. However, as the battle continued, the members of the teams of the Brilliant Shrine and Rotterdam Kingdom were all extremely shocked. Conoris wielded his Eternal Frost Blade effortlessly, and a large sword light arc appeared in front of the army of undead creatures. As the sword light flashed, countless undead creatures were slashed at the waste like crops that were being reaped. They could not resist at all. Master Basel raised his scepter, and magic spells descended from the sky and blasted the undead creatures, creating bare white areas. The crimson humorous Wyrm, the Lord of Nightmares, and the Demon Gordon were all summoned by Linley to join the battle too. The ones fighting were a president who could easily kill an elemental dragon at the peak of the legendary realm, two undead servants, whose combat power was not inferior to legendary powerhouses. Conoris, who was at the peak of the legendary level, the level 24 Master Basel, and the level 23 legendary powerhouses like the Crimson Humorous Wyrm, the Lord of Nightmares, and the Demon Gordon. The teams of the Brilliant Shrine and the Rotterdam Kingdom were each led by just two legendary powerhouses. However, the power displayed by the Tower of Dusk in this battle had clearly surpassed the two teams, and they even possessed an overwhelming advantage. Archbishop Martin couldn't help but sigh a little. He really had no idea how the Tower of Dusk operated. They actually managed to gain such terrifying power within such a short period of time. With such incredible strength, the Tower of Dusk was probably a top force in Anril now. The Tower of Dusk exhibited powerful strength. Regardless of whether they were surprised or scrupulous, the people from the Brilliant Shrine and Rotterdam pinned all their hopes of solving the crisis at hand on the Tower of Dusk. They hoped that they could overcome the ordeal like they had during the battle with the Elemental Dragon previously. However, as time passed, not only did they not see a glimmer of hope, they even felt that their hope was getting farther and farther away from them. The Tower of Dusk was extremely strong and they had astonishing abilities. They were simply killing the undead creatures one-sidedly. Even humorous Wyrms could not escape the fate of being slaughtered. However, there were too many undead creatures, and no one knew when they would stop coming. They only knew that ever since the beginning, the army of undead creatures did not slow down for a moment at all. If it was a tide of death was cast by a necromancer, every undead creature that was summoned would require a portion of mana from the necromancer. Once the mana of the necromancer was depleted, the tide of death would naturally end. However, the 36 double realm psychic towers turned the entire space in the sky castle into a projection of the world of the undead creatures. The undead creatures were truly infinite. Under that premise, no matter how many undead creatures were destroyed, there would be no change to the current situation. However, the expedition could not afford to keep up with it, while the undead creatures could afford to suffer a huge number of casualties. After all, the mana of mages was not infinite, and the priests would run out of power of light too. The sword sages would be exhausted as well. The alchemy colossuses similarly had to be powered by magical crystals. The mages of the Tower of Dusk were each wearing their top-grade magical equipment that could greatly increase the recovery speed of the mana of the mages. However, the recovery could only be performed by absorbing plenty of magical elements from the surrounding space in order for them to be converted into mana that the mages needed. However, the space that they were in had become a projection of the world of the undead. Apart from the intense death aura, there were no other elements at all. Under such circumstances, even if one possessed excellent magical equipment, they would not be able to exert 1% of their usual power. The mages of the Tower of Dusk soon discovered that issue and changed their tactics. They stopped attacking the army of undead creatures with their magic storm and instead placed the army of undead creatures in front of them before using precision strikes to improve the utilization of mana. However, that method actually did not solve the root cause of the problem. Although the usage of mana had become much more reasonable, there would still be a time when the mana ran out since they were facing an infinite amount of undead creatures. Actually, the situation on the Tower of Dusk's side was not too bad. The people of the Rotterdam had already replaced the magical crystals of the alchemy colossuses several times before and were running out of magical crystals. The priests and knights of the Brilliant Shrine had begun using potions to replenish their own power. However, to put it bluntly, no amount of potions 
would be enough, as they would just allow them to barely survive. Compared to the previous battle with the elemental dragon, the current battle with the undead creatures wasn't really considered thrilling. The undead creatures were continuously surging towards them. The three teams seemed to be effortlessly destroying the undead creatures and repeating the process continuously. However, that was what made them feel even more hopeless, and they were on the verge of losing their minds. No matter how many undead creatures they destroyed, it would not be of any help. That was the battle tactic of the necromancer. It was simple yet extremely shameless. It was just like using water to grind away the edges of a stone. He used the undead creatures with infinite combat power to suffocate his opponents to the point of death by exhaustion. President Felic, Master Donald, we must hurry and think of a solution. If this goes on, sooner or later we'll be worn to death by this group of undead creatures. Considering that the relationship between the Tower of Dusk and the Rotterdam Kingdom was strained, Archbishop Martin, the middleman who facilitated the cooperation, decided to step in and say something. Soon, Lin Lee and Donald each left their own teams and arrived at the spot where the team from the Brilliant Shrine was. Even though the situation had reached this point, Linley still had a calm expression. He could just use the control crystal and leave with his underlings. There was nothing too hopeless about it. However, Donald's face was extremely sullen. The situation of their team was much tougher than the brilliant shrines. Besides, unlike Linley, they did not have a backup solution. These undead creatures can never be destroyed completely. The root cause of the problem is still those 36 double realm psychic towers. We have to think of a way to destroy those towers, otherwise it'd be useless no matter how many undead creatures we destroy. Actually, everyone was well aware of the problem that Donald mentioned. However, it was one thing to know the issue, and another to solve it. Indeed, the only way to break through this space is by destroying those double realm psychic towers. However, with our current strength, we probably won't be able to afford to shelve out sufficient numbers to do it. If the amount of powerhouses we send out is too small, we won't be able to complete the task. If the force we dispatch is too strong, the ones remaining here probably won't be able to resist these undead creatures. Archbishop Martin said helplessly with a frown, now that they were faced with a dilemma, he could not think of a solution. Although he knew that the fundamental problem was those double realm psychic towers, they were not meant to be destroyed. Every tower had to be supported by a powerful necromancer. If they were in any other environment, Archbishop Martin, Donald, and the rest would not feel conflicted as long as there were no necromancers in the sanctuary realm. However, with the help of the double realm psychic towers, even level 20 necromancers, would have their combat power increased to the peak of the legendary level, their vitality would be extremely strong and they would become nearly immortal, making them become difficult opponents. Now that they were facing the oppression of the army of undead creatures, the teams of the three forces were already doing their best to resist. How could they have the spare energy to destroy the towers? Just like what Archbishop Martin had said, dispatching an insufficiently strong force would make it impossible for them to achieve the goal at all. But if they were to send out more powerhouses, the remaining forces wouldn't be enough to slow down the infinite army of undead creatures. How about this? I'll deal with the undead creatures while you destroy those towers. Linley suddenly made an unexpected suggestion that made others feel like he was somewhat arrogant. He was offering to deal with the entire army of undead creatures alone. Didn't that mean that he was trying to say that he was stronger than the three teams combined? Upon hearing that suggestion, the first thing that Archbishop Martin and Donald thought was that Linley was out of his mind. However, thinking about how Linley had easily killed the elemental dragon and the numerous ghost mages previously, they felt that that did not seem to be something that someone at the peak of the legendary realm could do. Perhaps he could really resist the undead creatures and help them by some time to destroy the double realm psychic towers. President Felic, will that not be too difficult? Why don't you let our teams do that while your team stays and helps you resist those undead creatures together? Archbishop Martin suggested, feeling a little worried. After all, Lin Li was the person Pope Rosario claimed was the son of the Holy Light. If anything really went wrong with the son of the Holy Light, no amount of treasures he obtained from the Sky Castle would be able to make up for the loss. No need. The key now is to concentrate the elite forces and break through this space. The longer we delay, the worse it will be for us. Lin Li was not a selfless person. However, if possible, he would not want to flee the Sky Castle just like that. After all, he and High Lord Osric had already formed a huge feud with each other. He did not want Osric to take control of the Sky Castle and look for him one day. Archbishop Martin and Donald originally still had some doubts about Lin Li's strength. However, at this moment, Lin Li pointed the Helios Scepter at the army of undead creatures, after which countless burning meteors and huge chunks of ice whistled in the sky and fell on them. In an instant, the army of undead creatures was split in two, and apart from the undead creatures, 
that had rushed closer to fight the three teams, a large empty spot appeared at the back. They could only see the army of undead creatures pouring in from a spot that was further away. Hurry up, Linley said to the two of them sternly without further explanations as he turned around. Seeing that, Archbishop Martin and Donald were shocked, but they also finally gained some confidence in Linley's strength. They both knew in their hearts that this might be their last chance, so neither of them paid any attention to Linley's tone. Instead, they instantly ordered their teams to regroup and withdraw from the battle in front. Likewise, the team from the Tower of Dusk had also received Linlis orders and left Linley to fight at the front line. After meeting up with the teams from the Brilliant Shrine and the Rotterdam Kingdom, they began retreating again. The Double Realm Psychic Tower that was the closest to them was naturally the one they passed on their way here in the Avenue Square, where they fought the Elemental Dragon. However, their current path was not unobstructed, as it was already crowded with the undead creatures that were pouring in. The three teams gathered all of their power, while the several legendary powerhouses charged towards the Double Realm Psychic Towers quickly without restraint. After the three teams left, Lin Li was the only one left to face the undead creatures. Although his strength had changed drastically after stepping into the Sanctuary Realm, it was still not an easy task to deal with such an endless army of undead at this time. Although Lin Li had wielded his Helios Scepter, and destroyed countless undead creatures, they were, in fact, just the cannon fodder of the army of undead creatures. Perhaps it was because they had sensed the intentions of the expedition, but the undead creatures that were surging in were no longer just the skeletal warriors that were used as cannon fodder. There were also many other high-level undead creatures like the skeletal mages, the vampires, skeletal beasts, and many others. The legendary-level undead creatures made up the majority. In fact, there were hundreds of humorous weirms, that tried to fly above Lin Lis' head in a bid to destroy the team aiming for the Double Realm Psychic Towers. However, even if those humorous weirms did not attack him, Lin Li would not let them off. His current mission was not to destroy numerous undead creatures, but to block them there so as to leave the expedition with no worries. Regardless of whether they were running on land or flying in the sky, he could not miss a single one. That would be difficult. It was no longer a matter of strength. Even if he was a sanctuary powerhouse, he was. After all, still alone, Lin Li flew straight up into the air, and he had already put away the Helios Scepter, replacing it with holy light and gloomy dark, the two pieces of the debris of the stars. Facing the humorous weirms that were trying to pass him, Lin Li activated the power of the debris of the stars, and angels of light and dark immediately condensed in the sky. They were flapping their black and white wings, and holding various weapons such as spears and swords. Ever since he had comprehended the killing move of the light and darkness sword a long time ago, Linley had not used the Angels of Light and Dark. After all, in many high-level battles, the power of the Angels of Light and Dark was too weak. However, what Linley needed the most now was not concentrated power, but dispersed one. Only then could he truly cordon off the sky. However, Linley had already stepped into the Sanctuary Realm. After all, he had experienced a huge qualitative change in his power. The Angels of Light and Dark that he had condensed were also vastly different in strength as compared to before. Each of them had reached level 20, and they had also become much more agile during battles. They were no longer as stiff as before. Bang! A pillar of light fell on the body of a high elven lich. However, black fog flashed on the high elven lich's body, and it instantly engulfed the pillar of light that possessed great purification power, leaving no trace of it behind. After the high elven lich, that was at the peak of the legendary realm joined the battle, the situation of the expedition became even worse. Although the high elven lich was also at the peak of the legendary level, it had become an invincible existence. Even the purification power of the holy light magic could not hurt him at all. Even if the magic spells and explosions hit him and caused him some damage, his body would recover and become perfect again in the blink of an eye. Despite the combined strength of three teams and the numerous legendary powerhouses that were facing the Double Realm Psychic Tower, they sunk into a stalemate. It was undoubtedly ironic. However, they were not to be blamed for being incompetent. It was just that the Double Realm Psychic Tower was too magical, and the lich that was at the peak of the legendary realm did not seem like it could be killed no matter what they tried. Even if there were more legendary powerhouses, it would not change the situation. As time passed, the strength of the expedition weakened, and they began to panic too. They did not know how long Lin Li was able to resist the undead creatures while standing behind the team. Once Lin Li encountered issues, the catastrophe would strike, and there would be no more chance of them turning the situation around. However, the high elven lich in front of them was making them feel incredibly frustrated. The problem wasn't that they couldn't beat him, but that they couldn't kill him. Anyone who met such a shameless opponent would probably go crazy. The purification of the holy light was not effective 
and neither was the burning of the flames. The extreme cold could not freeze him, and thunder and lightning were merely sound and light effects, respectively. Conoris landed on the head of a humorous weirm and stabbed it in its eye socket before pulling out a legendary dragon crystal. He then kicked the dead humorous weirm to the ground with both feet. In the blink of an eye, he had already killed more than ten humorous weirms to prevent them from disturbing those who were surrounding the high elven lich. However, Conoris was extremely displeased now. Several legendary powerhouses were besieging the high elven lich, but there was still no progress after a long time. If that were to go on, they would have to flee. Conoris was now using the perfect body of the high lord Osric, and he naturally did not want Osric to come knocking on his door one day and snatch the body that he had painstakingly obtained. Don't get embroiled with those undead creatures. Launch an all-out attack on the tower. Conoris yelled ruthlessly. He swiftly swung his eternal frost blade at the high elven lich, rapidly slashing it up to 100 times. All of a sudden, the high elven lich, that was being attacked by several peak legendary powerhouses, was slashed into pieces as numerous cuts covered his body. The crowd that had been alerted by Conoris immediately resorted to their strongest attacking methods upon seeing the situation, charging towards the double realm psychic tower that had been controlled by the Lich. The light of various magic spells immediately shrouded the double realm psychic tower with a deafening roar. However, the Lich that had been cut to pieces was soon revived again. In fact, it didn't seem weakened at all. With the support of the Lich, the power of the Double Realm Psychic Tower also exploded once more, easily blocking all the attacks behind it. Seeing this, Evryon's heart was in despair. In order to destroy the Double Realm Psychic Tower, they had to kill the High Elven Lich, but in order to do that, they would have to first destroy the Double Realm Psychic Tower. That was a problem that could not be solved. However, Conoris acutely discovered that although the Double Realm Psychic Tower quickly blocked the attacks from behind, the attacks from the front had indeed caused some damage to the tower. However, with the revival of the High Elven Lich, the Double Realm Psychic Tower was also recovering quickly. Continue, don't stop, Conoris yelled again. At the same time, he dodged and charged towards the High Elven Lich, while continuously waving the Eternal Frost Blade in his hand. Rays of light from the blade pierced through the space, and the defensive spells of the Lich before slashing it into pieces once more. Just like that, the expedition took advantage of the time taken for the Lich to recover, and attacked the Double Realm Psychic Tower with all their might. After about more than ten rounds, cobweb-like cracks had gradually appeared on the Double Realm Psychic Tower. Finally, during another attack, there was a thumping sound, and countless fragments darted everywhere, revealing a different scene. As the shell of the Double Realm Psychic Tower collapsed, the Lich that Conoris continuously slashed into pieces no longer revived. The ray of holy light cast by Archbishop Martin had completely purified it into nothingness. Upon sight of that scene, the team almost cheered and rejoiced. One of the Double Realm Psychic Towers had been destroyed, but that was not the most important thing. The most important thing was that they knew how to do it now. The Lich was not insusceptible to all attacks after all, but its soul fire would not be extinguished. Hence, no matter how damaged its body was, it would still be able to recover. However, recovery would take time, and even if it was just for a moment, the power gathered by the team would be enough to cause damage to the Double Realm Psychic Tower. After eliminating the remaining nearby undead creatures, the expedition did not waste any time at all. According to the map of the Sky Castle, they immediately headed towards another Double Realm Psychic Tower. Archbishop Martin shot a signal into the sky to inform Linley, who was far away, of the team's next goal. Otherwise, without Linley's protection, the expedition would soon be overwhelmed by the army of undead creatures. The expedition was not weak. There were nearly ten legendary powerhouses. After mastering the method of destroying the Double Realm Psychic Towers, their following actions would be a breeze. Besides, with the destruction of the Double Realm Psychic Towers, the power of the undead creatures plunged significantly. They became increasingly incapable of hampering the expedition's actions. Finally, after one day, the 36 Double Realm Psychic Towers were destroyed by the expedition, and the ink-black cloud in the sky gradually became thinner as well. At last, it revealed the defensive light of the sky castle. The intense death aura had also vanished without a trace. Fulick, it's been hard on you. Seeing Linley fly back from afar, Archbishop Martin immediately greeted him. He knew that without Linley, who stood behind them to resist the undead creatures, they would have never overcome the ordeal today. At this moment, Lin Li's appearance was no different from before. He did not look like he had gone through a tough battle at all. In comparison, the people of the expedition seemed much more pathetic and disheveled. Besides, the continuous attacks had also caused them to suffer plenty of casualties. In response to Archbishop Martin's greeting, Linley said a few polite words, smilingly before walking to the Tower of Dusk's team. There were some injured in the Tower of Dusk's team, but they were much fewer, 
compared to the other two forces wounded, although the three forces had cooperated to push the 36 double realm psychic towers to destruction, the process was quite difficult and thrilling. After all, apart from a lich that was at the peak of the legendary level, each double realm psychic tower was also protected by a large number of high-level undead creatures, which were all at about level 20. With the addition of the double realm psychic tower domain and the fearless creatures, the expedition faced great trouble. Other than the alchemy colossuses that had been completely destroyed, almost every remaining alchemy colossus of the Rotterdam's team had to be put through overhaul, or else they might have to be scrapped at some point. There were also more than 10 mages and knights that were killed in the battle, while half the team was wounded. The situation of the Brilliant Shrine was slightly better, although the power of light was greatly suppressed there. Its restraint against undead creatures had not been completely removed. However, due to the fact that they were in the domain of the projected world of undead creatures, it was difficult for them to obtain the power of light. As a result, many of the members of the Brilliant Shrine's team were wounded, though they had fewer casualties. In any case, with this situation in front of them, all of them could tell that immediately exploring the central tower of the Sky Castle would be no different from courting death. Now, the combat power of the three teams was probably not even half of what it was at its peak. Hence, they urgently needed to stop, rest, and recuperate. However, after the teams began to rest, Archbishop Martin of the Brilliant Shrine and Donald of Rotterdam again went to the Tower of Dusk's side to discuss the next step of the plan with Lindley. Of course, the so-called next step of the plan was not about the team resting and entering the central area of the Sky Castle. Archbishop Martin and Donald mainly wanted to take the opportunity to search the other areas of the Sky Castle while the team was resting, especially the 36 double realm psychic towers that had been destroyed. The initial plan for the exploration was to enter the central area of the Sky Castle as soon as possible and get rid of Osric who worried them the most. Then, they would seek the so-called treasures of the Immortal King. Hence, the route chosen was to advance almost directly towards the central area of the Sky Castle while temporarily ignoring the other areas. However, in that battle just now, the expedition had almost run through every area of the Sky Castle in order to destroy the double realm psychic towers that were scattered all over the Sky Castle. At that time, they had been pressed for time and couldn't care less about other issues, but now that the crisis had been eliminated and they had nothing to do during the recuperation, they might as well take the time to explore all those towers rather than do nothing. However, while the 36 double realm psychic towers had been destroyed and the enemies in those areas were basically purged, no one could guarantee that there really would not be any more danger. Besides, both teams were severely injured and basically most of the people had to stay behind to rest and recuperate while some had to stay on guard. They did not have enough available manpower. Hence, Archbishop Martin and Donald proceeded to look for Lindley because they wanted the Tower of Dusk to join them. After all, the three forces were now cooperating, although Lindley's main target was the Sky Castle, and he did not take the so-called treasures seriously. He did not turn down Archbishop Martin and Donald's suggestion. Since he still needed them to help him deal with Osric, he felt that he ought to let them get some benefits in advance. You are F4 right stories on, oh, V, L, B, N, C, M. However, Lindley did not participate in the exploration and instead told Master Basel and Alan to join them together with some mages. Lindley did not specifically instruct them to collect any treasures and left it to them to decide. Seeing that Lindley had only sent his men to participate in the exploration while acting uninterested, Archbishop Martin and Donald did not say anything else. Donald, in particular, was even more relieved. Regardless of whether or not Lindley was pretending to be generous, he probably would not be calculative in terms of distribution of the gains. After a series of battles, Donald began to have some misgivings about Linley and the Tower of Dusk. Linley had killed an elemental dragon and ghost mages and stopped the army of undead creatures with his own strength. Regardless of what techniques he used or what secret weapons and equipment he had, it was undeniably a reflection of his ability. Given the strength of the Rotterdam Kingdom, they naturally did not take the Tower of Dusk, a small force, seriously. However, the problem now was that they were in the Sky Castle, and it would be impossible for the Rotterdam to provide any help for the expedition at this moment. Hence, Donald had no choice but to be wary of the Tower of Dusk. Soon, the impromptu treasure hunting team formed by the three forces left the recuperation point under the lead of Archbishop Martin and the rest. Actually, even if Archbishop Martin and the others pocketed all the treasures from the 36 towers, it might not be able to compare to what Lindley had gained so far. Although Lindley didn't go for any treasures, Precious magical equipment and treasures were all for increasing one's strength and competency. Four others, 
those battles might be been an all-or-nothing deal, but it meant something different to Lin Li. The mages from the Tower of Dusk had gained some experience, but that was considered an intangible gain. The greatest gains were made by Lin Li's undead servants, and the Holy Death Knights. The Holy Death Knights that Lin Li had brought with him on this expedition were basically at level 19, where they had reached the threshold of being promoted to Retribution Knights. If they were ordinary Death Knights, the other Death Knights would stagnate at a certain level forever once one of the ordinary Death Knights had been promoted to a Retribution Knight, unless the latter died. However, the Death Knights under Lin Li were different. They coincidentally mistook Lin Li for the Retribution Knight, but Lin Li could not really draw power from them, like a real Retribution Knight could. Even though the Death Knights would offer their power to him, voluntarily out of their nature, Lin Li would not be able to use it at all unless he became a necromancer. Hence, even though the Death Knights treated Lin Li as the Retribution Knight and became his subordinates, they did not have their pathway to becoming Retribution Knights cut off. However, it was still very difficult for them to be promoted to Retribution Knights. Throughout such a long period of time, only one Death Knight managed to become a Retribution Knight, while the others were stuck at the peak of level 19. However, in order for all the Death Knights to be promoted to Retribution Knights, each one of them, would need to have a large amount of soul fire, which was very difficult to find in Anril. Even if all the undead creatures of the Shadagolin were destroyed, it would at most only allow three to five death knights to be promoted. In the past, after obtaining the first batch of death knights, Linley never thought that he would one day have a group of retribution knights. However, the thought was rather far-fetched then, and it was an idea that was distant or even unreal. Hence, it remained an illusion. However, there was the undead domain that the undead creatures had projected in the space created by the double realm psychic towers. That was a heaven that the undead creatures dreamed of. After the seemingly arduous battle, half of the 40-odd death knights broke through to level 20 and successfully became retribution knights. The remaining ones who did not get promoted merely needed a certain period of time to digest the large amount of soul fire that they had devoured. The doors to level 20 were already open for them. Lin Li believed that it wouldn't be long before he could truly have a group of knights made up of retribution knights. That was not a simple change of name, and it was not a matter of how much each death knight's strength had increased, but a huge surge in overall strength. Since Lin Li was not an actual retribution knight, many of the skills that were inherently owned by retribution knights for increasing combat power could not be used by Lin Li. Hence, even if all of the death knights were at the peak of level 19, they would still be incomparable to the group of Death Knights under Rod Hart. However, it was different now that the Death Knights had been promoted to Retribution Knights. Perhaps the skills of a level 20 Retribution Knight might not bring a huge improvement to the team. But what about the combined efforts of 40 Retribution Knights? It was safe to say that the combined combat power of 40 Retribution Knights would definitely not be inferior to the Death Knights under the Retribution Knight Rod Hart. Most importantly, Lin Li's Retribution Knights could still continue growing. Once all of them became Retribution Knights that were at the peak of the legendary level, what would they be like? Although Rod Hart's Death Knights were powerful, their combat power was limited by Rod Hart, the Retribution Knight. It would be difficult for those at Rod Hart's level to be promoted by one level. Of course, in addition to the promotion of the Death Knights, Linless Undead Servants and the Crimson Humorous Wyrm had gained great advantages during the battle. After devouring plenty of soul fire, the Crimson Humorous Wyrm naturally gained a great deal of strength. After a period of digestion, Vampire Norfler had also finally broken through the bottleneck and stepped into level 24. He was even near the pinnacle. The Ice Blast Wyrm Cinder's Dragon Blood Essence contained power that was almost comparable to that of the dragon aspects. It was no exaggeration to say that it was a major change for Norfolk, not to mention letting him advance to the peak of the legendary level. As long as he had sufficient soul fire, he might even enter the sanctuary realm easily. Due to the essence of the Ice Blast Wyrm Cinder's blood, the power of Norfolk, who had advanced to level 24, had become even more intense, and there were even dragon scales looming on his skin. At this moment, he looked more like a Wyrm than a vampire in every aspect. He did not look like a descendant of any Wyrm. His ancient vibe made him look just like a Wyrm. He could be considered an unprecedented, brand new species in Anril. Fusion of bloodlines was the specialty of vampires. Compared to the mixed bloodline of the Blood Moon clan, it was a completely different concept. Of course, it was because he was Norfolk. Other vampires would not be that lucky. Even if they had the blood of an ancient Wyrm, they would not be able to find a pharmaceutics guru like Linley to help them neutralize the overbearing power of the dragon's blood. One drop of it would cause them to die. Hence, even though the teams from the Brilliant Shrine and Rotterdam had suffered great losses after the intense battle, the power of the team of the Tower of Dusk was still increasing. However, that degree of increase was still not enough to satisfy Linley. It wasn't that he was too greedy, 
but he realized after that battle that there was a more serious problem. The power of High Lord Osric was probably far beyond what he had originally imagined. 36 double realm psychic towers should be considered important facilities in the Sky Castle, yet Osric could control them. He was probably not far from completely controlling the Sky Castle. More importantly, since Osric was able to manipulate the 36 double realm psychic towers, there was no reason for him not to use them to restore his own power. Hence, if Lin Li were to face Osric now, he would not have any faith in his power. Thus, during the recuperation, Archbishop Martin and the others were thinking of exploring the Sky Castle to get more treasures. While Lin Li was thinking about how he could use the time to increase his power, of course, Lin Li did not dream of gaining the ability to destroy Osric immediately but having more power would at least give him a higher chance of survival. At the thought of this, a nail-sized magical crystal, which looked like a small gem often inlaid in rings appeared on Linlis' palm. That magical crystal was exactly what he had obtained when he had killed the elemental dragon. Although it looked rather small, the mana it contained was terrifying even to Linli. Linli originally intended to give the magical crystal to the tender elemental worm, Xiaohua, and did not plan to use it now. Although Xiaohua was powerful, it was still growing and devouring such a huge amount of mana all at once would be a boost to its growth. According to Lin Lis' vision, he wanted to wait until he returned to the Tower of Dusk and set up an alchemy array that could restrict the output of mana of the magical crystal, before letting the tender elemental Weirm Xiaohua slowly absorb the mana. Although it was slow, it would only take a few years, at most for Xiaohua to digest all of the mana in the magical crystal and enter adulthood. However, Lin Li had to change his plans now. If he could not overcome the ordeal of Osric, then no matter how good his future plans were, they would be useless. Thinking of this, Lin Li gave a few words to his men and got up to leave the place where the expedition was recuperating. He arrived at a place where there was no one else and enveloped it with his mental strength, silently incorporating it into his domain. At this time, anyone below the sanctuary realm would not be able to detect the slightest change in this area. However, in reality, Lin Li had already become the master of that space, and all the laws were subject to his will. Making sure that he wouldn't be disturbed by any accidents, Lin Li's heart skipped a beat. The tender elemental Weirm, Xiao Hua, which was sleeping in Dream Garden, yawned and stretched before wriggling out of Dream Garden. Xiao Hua, which was originally complaining that Lin Li had disturbed its beautiful dream, grimaced and seethed before suddenly twitching its nose twice. It finally found the magical crystal in Lin Li's other hand. Xiao Hua immediately stopped looking unhappy, and its eyes glistened before screaming and pouncing on the magical crystal like a woman who saw a diamond. However, just as Xiao Hua was about to pounce on the magical crystal, Lin Li suddenly clutched the magical crystal in his hand. Poor Xiao Hua collided with Lin Li's fist and rolled backwards for two full revolutions. It then shrieked and flat its wings before leaping towards Lin Li, hugging his finger and scratching it in a bid to make him let go. Seeing how eager Xiao Hua was, Lin Li was amused. However, there was no time to play with it. Hence, he pushed Xiao Hua away with his finger and said, don't worry, this is meant for you. However, can you chew on it like this? Xiao Hua quieted down after hearing that it was for it. However, it was still licking its lips with its tongue, and its lips were glistening with saliva. Although Lin Li did not know the origin of the undead elemental dragon, he knew that it was definitely transformed from an adult elemental dragon. The only reason it couldn't exert its sanctuary level power was due to the fact that it had become an undead creature. However, the mana contained in its magical crystal was tens or hundreds of times stronger than Xiao Hua's. Although the magical crystal was only fingernail sized and looked like it could be swallowed by Xiao Hua easily, Xiao Hua's small body would immediately expand like a balloon and then explode to pieces if it really did that. Hence, Lin Li did not plan to let Xiao Hua chew it like other magical crystals. There was no time for it to absorb slowly, but it would be impossible to devour it completely too. Hence, after some consideration, Lin Li decided to go for the craziest method, which was fusion. After painstakingly holding Xiao Hua back from swallowing it at once, Lin Li immediately began the first step of fusion, according to his own plan. Fusion might sound very simple, but those with knowledge of magic, would know how insane and impractical it was. It was a ridiculous idea that defied the supreme laws of Anril. The magical crystals of magical beasts were not just a fusion of mana. Every trace and particle of one had the sole brand of a magical beast. It was the same for human mages. Through meditation, they would mark the stray magical elements, absorbed into their bodies with their own sole brand, and make it their own mana. That was also the reason that the flames cast by mages would not burn them and the ice element magic spells would not freeze them. Without the soul brand, casting magic spells would be akin to suicide. Hence, in order to absorb the mana in the magical crystal, the most important thing was to erase the soul brand on the mana, 
which was a process that was neither difficult nor easy. Four ordinary magical crystals that were above level 10. Xiao Hua would erase the soul brand on them while gnawing and digesting them. It would take more effort for ordinary legendary magical crystals. The magical crystal of elemental dragons could not be compared to ordinary legendary magical crystals. Although it was at the peak of the legendary level, the mana it contained was not much inferior to that of sanctuary level creatures. With Xiao Hua's power alone, it would probably take at least several to more than 10 years of effort to erase the soul brand. Lin Li now had to fuse the elemental dragon's magical crystal with Xiao Hua's body but that was not erasing the soul brand slowly. Instead, it would be trying to completely erase the soul brand from the nearly infinite mana within a short period of time. However, even powerhouses like the three arbitrators might not be able to do that, let alone Linley. Perhaps only mythical figures like the Immortal King and Garesco could do it. Furthermore, the soul brand of the magical crystal was also a restriction of mana. Once gone, all the mana would instantly explode. What scene would the explosion of a magical crystal that contained tens or hundreds of times more mana than an ordinary peak legendary level magical crystal look like. Its power was even more terrifying than the full force of a sanctuary powerhouse. Perhaps even the sky castle would explode, let alone Lin Li. However, even if Lin Li had the means to, he would not take such a huge risk. Therefore, what he had to do was not to completely erase the soul brand of the magical crystal, but to assimilate it. In fact to others, there seemed to be no difference between the two and assimilating the soul brand was even more troublesome than erasing it. Besides, Xiao Hua was only a tender elemental worm that had yet to mature, be it in terms of soul or body. If he wanted to assimilate the soul brand of an adult elemental dragon, it might backfire. If it had been someone else, there might have been no way out, but to Lin Li, that was a shortcut he could take. When the tender elemental worm Xiao Hua hatched, Lin Li expended all of his mental strength to leave a trace of soul brand in its soul to subdue Xiao Hua, a future super fighter. Although the elemental dragon's projected avatar had intervened and made it impossible for Xiao Hua to completely become Lin Li's summoned creature, the soul contact between the two was incomparably strong because of that wisp of soul brand. It was naturally very difficult for Xiao Hua to assimilate the soul brand on its own, and it could even be considered impossible. However, Lin Li could protect Xiao Hua's soul directly using soul contact. That would drastically increase the success rate. Lin Li might have just stepped into the sanctuary realm but in terms of mental strength alone, perhaps even the three great arbitrators would not be able to compare with him. Lin Li and Xiao Hua communicated a little through the soul brand, and Lin Li transmitted some of his intentions to it. Although Xiao Hua couldn't taste the deliciousness of the magical crystal and was not too clear about Lin Li's intentions, Xiao Hua nonetheless swallowed its saliva and nodded out of trust for Lin Li. Lin Li relaxed a little and slowly increased the output of his mental strength through the soul brand in Xiao Hua's soul. He gradually connected their souls. Lin Li turned the entire space into his magical domain. While facilitating the soul contact with Xiao Hua's soul, he also incorporated Xiao Hua into the rules of his domain. Everything in this world, be it alive or not, was an aggregate of various laws of origin. Four mages, the legendary realm was about comprehending the world laws, and then using, or borrowing nomological power using the world laws. Meanwhile, the sanctuary realm involved changing the laws and truly making the world laws their own. At the peak of the sanctuary realm, the mage would be at the stage of creating laws. They could only leave Anril and enter the endless chaos of time and space to explore after reaching the level of creating laws. Lin Li was now the master of this domain and had absolute control over all the laws in the domain. After incorporating Xiao Hua into the domain, Xiao Hua became a portion of the domain in a certain sense, thus becoming one of the aggregates of the laws. Although Lin Li could not really change the laws on Xiao Hua, the insights and familiarity he had with those laws were incomparable. After Xiao Hua had completely integrated into Lin Li's domain, it immediately released its mental strength under Lin Li's command. Its goal was the elemental dragon crystal that was floating right before its eyes. Using the soul contact, Xiao Hua's current mental strength had already reached a massive and unprecedented level with Lin Li's help. It was more than 10 times stronger than an actual adult elemental dragon's. The massive power surged into the elemental dragon crystal and began to mercilessly wash away the soul brand on every trace of mana. Under Lin Li's guidance, Xiao Hua was not washing the mana away with the aim to remove it, but to continuously erode and assimilate, replacing the soul brand that belonged to the undead elemental dragon with Xiao Hua's own soul brand. That process would definitely take quite a long time if Xiao Hua were to do it on its own. In fact, 
It might even be subjected to the backlash of the undead elemental dragon's soul brand. After all, Xiao Hua was still an adolescent, and the other party might take the opportunity to take over its body. However, with Lin Li's help, things were very different. The massive mental strength was like an invincible army that attacked all the way, continuously invading the enemy's territory. At the same time, Lin Li relied on his control over the domain to suppress the laws in the magical crystal and disintegrated the resistance of the soul brand of the magical crystal with an irresistible will to dominate. That also caused the speed of Xiao Hu's assimilation of the soul brand to reach an extreme. Hence, in the eyes of others, assimilating the soul brand was something that was impossible as it went against the world laws. But for Lin Li and Xiao Hua, it merely took a minute or so to complete. Soon, through the contact between their souls, Lin Li could clearly feel that Xiao Hu's soul brand had completely received and accepted the magical crystal of the elemental dragon. From then on, there was no difference between the elemental dragon's magical crystal and the tender elemental Wyrm Xiao Hua's magical crystal. It could be considered an out-of-body magical crystal of Xiao Hua. However, that was only half of what Lin Li had envisioned. An external magical crystal was nothing to Lin Li. Xiao Hua couldn't carry it in a battle. Besides, without the support of the mana circulation system, Xiao Hua wouldn't be able to use the mana in it like it would with its magical crystal. Even if it became the owner of the magical crystal, the second step was the true fusion. Lin Li wanted to truly fuse the elemental dragon's magical crystal with the one in Xiao Hua's body to make it become an even more powerful magical crystal. Only then could Xiao Hua truly benefit from the magical crystal and gain an improvement in power. Even if the fusion would allow both magical crystals to share the same owner, it was a very dangerous process especially since the mana contained in both magical crystals was extremely different. Hence, the potential difference created during the fusion process was a problem that could not be ignored. If the process was not controlled well, Xiao Hu's magical crystal might be damaged, and Xiao Hu's life might be at risk too. However, Lin Li had already thought about these issues beforehand. Without sufficient confidence, he would not bear to let Xiao Hua take the risk. He reached his hand out, and the debris of the stars, nothingness, floated out of the ring of endless storm. It then disappeared again and fused with the domain. With the help of the debris of the stars, nothingness, Lin Li had a more detailed and thorough control over the laws of time and space in the domain. The magical crystal that was hovering in front of Xiao Hua had also flickered a little. Although there did not seem to be any change, one would be able to sense that the magical crystal actually no longer existed in that space at this moment. Lin Li was not a surgeon, and even if he wanted to fuse the magical crystal for Xiao Hua, he could not slice its stomach open. Of course, that was only one reason why he used the space laws. Another reason was that he wanted to use the changes in space to balance the potential difference in mana between the two magical crystals. Lin Li stretched out his finger and gently tapped the elemental dragon's magical crystal, which seemed like a balloon that had been touched as it slowly floated towards the tender elemental worm. After Xiao Hua was incorporated into the domain, Lin Li no longer saw it as a tender elemental worm. The so-called physical body was just an aggregate made up of various nomological powers. In the eyes of others, the magical crystal of the elemental dragon had slowly disappeared into the tiny body of the tender elemental worm, but to Lin Li, it was moving from one composition of laws to another. Finally, the magical crystal of the elemental dragon had fused with the one in Xiao Hu's body. However, due to the fact that they were each on a different spatial level, it wasn't really a fusion yet. Then, under Lin Li's manipulation, the characteristics of the four elemental laws of the space were instantly changed. Even the raging fire element had become extremely peaceful. All of the elements had the same feature, which was tolerance. The magical crystals of the elemental dragon also gradually returned to this world from another spatial level. At the same time, the fusion of the two magical crystals also began. Under the help of Lin Li's change of rules, the magical crystal in Xiao Hu's body gained some virtual strength and made up for the potential difference between the two magical crystals. However, that was only the first step of the fusion of the magical crystals. Xiao Hu's body was not an alchemy array, and it was impossible to string the two magical crystals together as a mana source. He couldn't make them tolerate each other, either. True fusion was to make both magical crystals become one. That fusion was precise to the smallest particle, just like pouring one glass of water into another. One would never be able to tell which part of water came from which cup, only then would it be a perfect fusion. Otherwise, it would result in unpredictable effects on Xiao Hua's future growth. Lin Li was still hoping that Xiao Hua could become an existence like the dragon aspects. Of course, he dared not be sloppy at this moment. However, magical crystals were not water, so it was impossible to pour them together and stir them up to mix them together. Although they had the same owner, 
they were still two separate entities, after all, that involved an intricate manipulation and change of the rules. Even with Lin Lis' mental strength, he still found it difficult to do so. Fortunately, Lin Lis' mental strength had been refined by the Sky Castle, when they first explored the Sky Castle. After stepping into the Sanctuary Realm, his advantage was even more enhanced. Under Lin Lis' meticulous control, every single mana particle in the two magical crystals became active, as if a spell had been cast. However, it was maintained in such a state while the nomological power could not be controlled. At this moment, the magical crystals were like steel that had been melted by the heat, changing from a solid to a liquid state. Of course, that was only a change in laws, and they were not subjected to heat or other conditions. It was just a change of laws purely due to the activity of the mana particles. Under Lin Lis' control with his mental strength, the two magical crystals began to slowly fuse as the active mana particles penetrated each other. Lin Li still had to be mindful of the structure of the magical crystal. Every substance had its own stable structure, which was why it could exist in a certain state. Magical crystals were no exception. Besides, the structure of the magical crystals was a sort of magic array made up of countless mana particles. That magic array was naturally set up when the magical crystals were created. The innate ability of magical beasts to cast certain magic spells came from that. The magic array contained in the magical crystal of every magical beast was different. They ranged from low level to high level, master level, guru level, and beyond. That could be considered a type of aptitude of the magical beasts. For example, regardless of how a magical beast grew, it would never advance beyond level 10 if their magical crystals had low level magic arrays. On the other hand, a magical beast with a master level magic array in its magical crystal would naturally reach the legendary level, as long as it had enough time. Those with guru level magic arrays that might surpass the guru level would be known as divine beasts. As an ancient weirm that once dominated the sky of Anril, the elemental dragon was the most powerful existence amongst all the top creatures. The magic array in its magical crystal had already reached the peak of the guru level. What Lin Li had to do now, the so-called fusion of the two magical crystals, was not only the mixing of mana particles, there was also the fusion of guru level magic arrays. It would only be a true fusion if that was done. Magic arrays were not just building blocks, they were magic arrays that were formed by mana particles. They were interlocked with no mistakes at all. It was extremely stable, but that made it easier for it to collapse. Perhaps it might seem like a wrong arrangement of mana particles, would cause the collapse of the entire magical crystal. That was what too much of a good thing may be bad, meant. With Lin Lis attainments in creating magic arrays, dealing with a peak guru level magic array was not beyond his means. However, the problem was that the magic array was too large and complex. It was like the difference between building a wall with bricks and building a wall with fine sand. The fine sand had to be piled up one grain at a time, and it had to be as solid as a brick wall. Hence, compared to the assimilation of the soul brand, the fusion process of the magical crystals was much slower. It took three to four hours for both the magical crystals to be fully fused with each other. In the process of this fusion, the body of the tender elemental Wyrm Xiao Hua also underwent great changes. Although Xiao Hua's body did not grow significantly, the color of its body and the patterns on it turned from a brilliant color to a deep one. The thin pair of wings on Xiao Hua's back, which were as thin as that of cicadas, were shrouded in a faint halo of light. If one were to probe them with their mental strength, they would discover that the halo of light was actually made up of countless extremely tiny magic symbols. Each mysterious magic symbol contained pure elemental rules that strangely resonated with the origin of elements in Anril. Under the huge infusion of mana, Xiao Hua finally reached the peak of its growth and was only a step away from reaching true maturity. That also meant that Xiao Hua's strength was infinitely close to the sanctuary realm. Perhaps it only needed an opportunity to truly become an adult or sanctuary level elemental dragon. Although it had yet to break through to the sanctuary realm, Xiao Hua's increased strength was probably not inferior to ordinary sanctuary powerhouses. Besides, Xiao Hua had also assimilated the soul brand of the elemental dragon to allow its soul to grow tremendously. Otherwise, with the original intensity of its soul, it might not be able to handle such a powerful force. Assimilating the soul brand meant that Xiao Hua had acquired a portion of the undead elemental dragon's soul inheritance. Although it was incomplete, it was, after all, from an adult elemental dragon, especially since it contained the battle experience that allowed Xiao Hua to save some time for accumulation. After completing the fusion of the magical crystals, Lin Li retracted his mental strength and finally let out a long breath. Although he had planned well and was confident, the process was still full of hardships. Fortunately, 
His efforts were not wasted. Despite the fact that Xiao Hui's growth was not enough to guarantee that they would triumph over Osric, it at least provided added assurance and manpower. However, Lin Li was confused as to why Osric was still indifferent even, though Lin Li had cast the sanctuary-level magical domain for such a long time. The fusion of magical crystals for Xiao Hua just now involved a change in laws, and thus it definitely had greater changes to the perception of a sanctuary powerhouse than the battle with the army of undead creatures. As a sanctuary powerhouse who might have reached the pinnacle, Osric would have definitely detected it as long as he was still in the Sky Castle. Lin Li did not think that Osric would be like some idiotic demon king, who first chose to send his underlings to heroes for the latter to advance in level, when he clearly could have killed all the so-called heroes. Hence, it was very likely that Osric was doing something that was more important than destroying the invaders, and the enemies who had stolen his body and he was too busy to bother with them. What would be that important to Osric now? Perhaps it would only be gaining control of the Sky Castle. Could it be that Osric is doing his best to control the Sky Castle now, and so is too busy to deal with the intruders, the expedition? At the thought of it, Linley couldn't help but get a little more anxious. If he had guessed correctly, Osric would have undoubtedly reached the most crucial juncture now. He could probably get complete control of the Sky Castle at any moment. If things were to reach that point, there would be no need for Osric to take action himself. The power of the Sky Castle alone would be enough to annihilate him and the others. Lin Li made Xiao Hua return to Dream Garden while he stood up and returned to the place where the expedition was resting in a bid to see if Archbishop Martin and the others had gained anything from their exploration. Originally, Lin Li thought that it might be possible that Archbishop Martin and the others had yet to return since it had only been a short period of time but to his surprise, Archbishop Martin and the rest were present when he reached the place. They even welcomed him as soon as they saw him. Before Linley could even ask anything, the Archbishop said with an awkward expression, Flick, look at those towers. Is there any way for you to enter? That was strange. Linley remembered that Archbishop Martin had the keys to the various parts of the Sky Castle. No matter how impressive the magical thousand contraption lock might be, it could be opened with the right keys. However, how could locks that could not be unlocked with keys be called locks? Seeing the doubtful expression on Lin Li's face, Archbishop Martin smiled wryly and said, Ever since the Double Realm Psychic Towers were destroyed, the Magical Thousand Contraption Lock can indeed be opened with a key, but after opening the door, it won't be a straight smooth path. We did not expect there to be so many magic, gears and magic traps in the magic towers. We took such a long time but we did not even manage to finish exploring a single tower. It would probably take us at least 20-odd days to finish exploring all 36 towers. When Lin Li and the others first explored the Sky Castle, the Seven Realm Spiral was the most powerful magic trap that they encountered. Although the power of Lin Li and the rest back then could not be compared to that of Archbishop Martin and the rest, they still managed to pull through, mainly because no one manned the Seven Realm Spiral for more than 1,000 years. Although the magic gears and magic traps in the 36 towers could not be compared to those of the Central Tower, they were controlled by liches of the peak legendary realm. Their power had long been activated to the extreme. Actually, they were probably more dangerous than the Central Tower. It was no wonder that Archbishop Martin and the rest took so much time and effort to explore just one. Lin Li's original intention was not to waste too much time on those magic towers. However, the injured members of the team had yet to recover. He also wanted to determine where Osric was, especially to see if there were any clues about the method Osric used to control the Sky Castle. Lin Li could not imagine how High Lord Osric could control the Sky Castle without the control crystal. However, the various signs showed that Osric had a certain extent of control over the Sky Castle. In fact, he could gain complete control of it any time. All right, then I'll bring someone this time and accompany you on this trip. Lin Li agreed with a nod. Seeing that Lin Li nodded, the Archbishop looked rather elated, while Donald of the Rotterdam Kingdom was secretly displeased. In Donald's opinion, exploring the tower was a bit difficult, but it would at most just take a little more time. There was no need to invite Lin Li to join them at all. Although the Tower of Dusk took part in the exploration just now, it was completely different without the President. If they made any gains, the Tower of Dusk would take away 10% of it. However, since Archbishop Martin had already invited Lin Li, there was nothing Donald could say. Even if there was no hope of getting close to the Tower of Dusk, they at least could not push the Tower of Dusk and the Brilliant Shrine together. Lin Li instructed some people in Conoris, in particular, to follow Archbishop Martin back to the Magic Tower. Conoris' body was the perfect body that Osric had made for himself, and although Conoris had already gained a perfect coordination with the perfect body, he could still sense the location of Osric's soul through his body a little bit. The team arrived in front of a magic tower. It was in complete mess, 
with all sorts of rotting skeletons scattered everywhere, as well as a large number of bloodied fragments exuding death aura. The gates of the tower were wide open. Archbishop Martin was the one who taught them how to open it. Previously, they had only reached the third floor before retreating, and what they gained was just some items that were somewhat valuable. Archbishop Martin asked Linley to join them, but he did not expect Linley to solve all the problems at once. He just hoped that with some of his knowledge of the Sky Castle, he would be able to provide some help to them for the exploration. If they faced any problems, it was still necessary for everyone to come together to discuss and solve them. After all, the magic gears and magic traps were left behind by the Immortal King. Donald also had the same idea. In fact, he did not think that Linley would be of much help in particular. The fields of different professions were different worlds. Just because he was good at combat, it did not mean that he was good at everything. Magic gears and magic traps were not magical beasts. They could only be cracked by someone with profound and professional knowledge. Just now, it took a bunch of people and a long period of time to study a magic gear just now. Donald did not think that a young man in his 20s would have such profound knowledge. The group of people soon arrived on the third floor of the tower and stopped in front of a magic gear. Actually, there was nothing they could see there except just a few puddles of blood on the ground which had been clearly left behind by Archbishop Martin and the others when they came previously. After stopping here, Archbishop Martin and Donald turned their heads to look at Lindley and the others who arrived later. They planned to give him a brief introduction of the place and then discuss what to do next. However, to Evryon's surprise, Lin Lee and the members of the Tower of Dusk who were under his lead did not stop in their tracks at all. They simply walked over to the location of the magic gear as if they knew nothing. Fay, Archbishop hurriedly yelled, but he was soon dumbfounded and paused. On the other hand, the people from the Rotterdam Kingdom were initially waiting to see a good show, but they soon acted like they had seen a ghost. Just before the people of the Tower of Dusk were about to walk to the magic trap, the funny dwarf in colorful armor suddenly wandered out fiddling with something. He then nothing. Nothing happened. Archbishop Martin and the rest were dumbfounded. The magic gear that had hindered them just now and could not be solved no matter what was actually cracked by the funny dwarf. They could not believe their eyes at all. Seeing such a scene, Donald became even more enthusiastic. Why bother searching for treasures? The dwarf himself was simply a treasure. After seeing Angelano's attainments, when he was fixing the alchemy colossuses, Donald had the intentions of getting close to him. Now that he had seen Angelano cracking the magic gear easily, that idea popped out uncontrollably. However, that was only the beginning. As the magic gears and magic traps were cracked one by one, the team's advancement did not decrease in speed or get affected at all. They did not even stop in their tracks. The vexing magic gears and magic traps did not have any effect in front of the funny dwarf. The people of the two forces gradually got numb while standing in the back. They got up to the fourth floor, the fifth floor, and finally reached the top floor of the magic tower. It could be said that their journey was rather smooth sailing. Although everyone was surprised by the performance of the Tower of Dusk, they did not let go of the various valuable things they encountered along the way. However, the wealth of the magic tower was actually worse than what people imagined. There were some precious magical materials and high-level magical equipment. However, they were far from being treasures. Perhaps, for the average person, the harvest could still be called huge. But what kind of level were the people from the Brilliant Shrine in Rotterdam? Of course, it was not just a magic tower. Perhaps, there would be better ones in the other magic towers, or maybe there was none. If they could explore all 36 towers, the wealth accumulated would be shocking. Lin Lee, however, despised those items, and he could not even be bothered to discuss with them the distribution of the items. The reason he was there was to search for any hidden spaces to see if Osric was hiding somewhere, or if there were any clues about Osric's method of controlling the Sky Castle. Unfortunately, even when they made it all the way to the top of the tower, Conor still did not detect any information about Osric through his body. Although there were some magic books in the tower, as well as a few notes from the High Elven Liches back then, nothing useful was mentioned in them. President Flick, should we distribute the items? After all, we are partners, and thanks to your people, we can explore the towers so quickly and smoothly. After reaching the top floor of the tower, the expedition conducted a thorough search again. However, the Tower of Dusk's decision not to take anything made Archbishop Martin feel rather guilty. After all, in Archbishop Martin's eyes, Lin Lee was part of the Brilliant Shrine, and no matter what his identity was to others, he would always be related to the Brilliant Shrine since he was the son of the Holy Light. Of course, his identity was still unproven, but it was mainly because Lin Lee himself refused to admit it. Archbishop Martin trusted Pope Rosario's judgment more. Therefore, Archbishop Martin hoped that the Tower of Dusk would also participate in the distribution of the spoils. Anyway, 
One did not allow benefits created by one's own work to accrue to others. If the Tower of Dusk joined in the distribution, the people of the Rotterdam Kingdom would get a smaller share. Donald did not know about the matters regarding the so-called Son of the Holy Light, hence, when he heard Archbishop Martin's words, his face naturally grew sullen as he secretly criticized Archbishop Martin for being silly. However, he dared not blatantly oppose him. After all, in the following exploration, he clearly still needed to rely on the people of the Tower of Dusk. Hence, he decided to give them some advice. However, in the face of their persuasion, Lindley did not waver. Instead, he shook his head and said, you can distribute them amongst yourselves. If there is nothing else, let's move on to the next tower. Lindley really didn't care about the so-called treasures. If he could successfully get rid of Osric, then the entire Sky Castle would belong to him. Those items were nothing compared to that. However, if he couldn't get rid of Osric, it would be nothing even if he got more treasures. Seeing that Lindley was so stubborn, Archbishop Martin and Donald no longer persuaded him, and the two forces split the spoils before leaving the magic tower without staying. They walked out of the tower, feeling secretly amazed at the fact that the Tower of Dusk had gotten such a competent dwarf who could crack all magic gears and magic traps. They only took about ten minutes in total. However, when he walked out of the gate of the tower, Lindley had a sudden idea, and he waved his hand after which a fist-sized bone pearl flew into his hand. He barely felt any mana fluctuations in the bone pearl, which did not emit the slightest death aura, either. It looked just like an ordinary worthless ornament. Hence, when they saw what Lindley did, Archbishop Martin did not ask anything, although they were a little puzzled. They did not find there to be anything special about the bone pearl. The reason that Lindley picked up the bone pearl was precisely because of its ordinariness. Although Lindley hadn't participated in the battle to destroy the double realm psychic towers, he could imagine how intense the battle had been just by looking at the surrounding scenes. Yet, the ordinary looking bone pearl hadn't been damaged at all in the battle. Thus, Lindley reckoned that it definitely was not a coincidence. After Lindley got the bone pearl, he did not stop, and instead he walked towards another tower while examining the bone pearl with his mental strength. He only discovered then that although there wasn't a trace of mana on the surface, there was actually a very large amount of life and death power in it. However, neither of the powers was exposed, because they had reached a balance. At this moment, Linley suddenly remembered what he had read about a key component of the double realm psychic tower, in the notes belonging to the Lich. It was known as the Realm Pearl. Legend had it that it was refined from countless skeletons. During the extraction of the bones, the bones had to be taken away from living beings when they were alive. It could be described as cruel and ruthless. Besides, a spatial barrier could be activated in the double realm psychic tower to allow the world of the undead creatures to be projected into that space, which was precisely due to the power of the realm bead. Originally, Lin Li had some doubts as to whether the bone pearl in his hand was the realm pearl of the double realm psychic towers. However, when the team reached another tower, he picked up a second bone pearl that had rolled into a corner. Half of his doubts were cleared then. Lin Li, who already treated the Sky Castle as his own, obviously felt the pinch because of the destruction of the Double Realm Psychic Towers. Even if he destroyed Osric and gained full control over the Sky Castle, reconstructing the Double Realm Psychic Towers was impossible. Even if he could find enough materials, he couldn't find that many lives to sacrifice. However, given the situation, if they had not destroyed the Double Realm Psychic Towers, Lin Li would probably have had to use the Control Crystal to flee the Sky Castle with the team. Facing the truly infinite army of undead creatures, even sanctuary powerhouses would be exhausted to death. Besides, Osric was still keeping an eye on them in the dark. Therefore, even though he was reluctant, and was certain that he would not be able to rebuild the Double Realm Psychic Towers in the future, he had no choice but to destroy them. After all, Compared to the Double Realm Psychic Towers, destroying High Lord Osric was the most important thing to do now. However, the discovery of the Realm Pearl of the 36 Double Realm Psychic Towers made Linley feel somewhat comforted. Although there was no longer any hope in rebuilding the Double Realm Psychic Towers, he would be able to install the 36 Realm Pearls in the Black Front Fortress if he could find all of them. He could then use their power to attract the pure death aura from the world of the undead creatures. Although it could not compare to the psychic array of the Double Realm Psychic Towers, it would allow the Death Knights and undead creatures in the Black Front Fortress to gain great benefits. They only took 10 odd minutes to explore the second tower, before moving on to the third and fourth ones. Although they did not gain much in every tower, the spoils combined would be quite a considerable gain for the people of the Brilliant Shrine and Rotterdam Kingdom. In the process, every time Lin Li went near a tower, he would pick up a Realm Pearl. However, they rarely appeared later. Archbishop Martin, Donald, and the rest did not notice it. Although Lin Li placed the 36 Realm Pearls into his Ring of Endless Storm, 
he did not feel too elated, because he did not gain any information about Osric after exploring the 36 magic towers. Could Osric have already entered the central tower? That made Lin Li feel a little worried. Conoris did not discover anything. That was enough to prove that Osric really was not there. All the previous experiences showed that Osric hadn't abandoned the Sky Castle. Since he was not there, the central tower was the only place where Osric might be. Previously, Lin Li had been rather eager to enter the central tower because he wanted to gain complete control of the Sky Castle before Osric did. Once he had complete control of the Sky Castle, it would be much easier to deal with Osric in the future. However, there was still a deviation in the plan in the end. If Osric did not enter the central tower, Lin Li would be confident that he would be able to reach the top without any obstructions along the way with the control crystal. However, Osric now occupied the central tower, and Lin Li did not think that he would allow him and his people to create trouble for him. Although he had the control crystal, and had walked through the central tower once during his first exploration, Lin Li did not believe that the central tower, built by the Immortal King was really limited to that. In fact, Lin Li had only explored a small area of the central tower during his first exploration. If not for Osric, Lin Li wouldn't have to worry about any unknown accidents, since he had the control crystal. However, the current situation was that Osric's mastery of the Sky Castle was in fact greater than Lin Li's mastery of the control crystal. Hence, he had to be worried. Even though Lin Li had already walked through it once, the central tower was still a place that was full of unknown dangers to Lin Li. He could not predict what Osric would place in the central tower, and what kind of traps he would lay to deal with him. After all, the central tower was left behind by the Immortal King, and Osric was a proud disciple of the Immortal King, who had inherited almost all of the Immortal King's knowledge. No one understood the Immortal King better than Osric did. However, Lin Li wasn't willing to give up just like that. It would be fine if there was just one Osric to deal with. If he could not deal with him, himself, he could still ask the three arbitrators for help. However, if Osric had complete control of the Sky Castle, the three arbitrators might not be able to do anything to him, even if they were to intervene. That would truly be the end of the Tower of Dusk then. The only thing to be thankful for was that Osric had probably reached the critical juncture of gaining control of the Sky Castle and did not have time to bother with the expedition. That was more or less a chance. After all, Lin Li had the control crystal, and he did not need to gain control bit by bit like Osric. As long as he was able to get to the top of the central tower before Osric did, all of Osric's previous efforts would only be in vain. Of course, if it was the other way around, it was possible that Osric could take complete control of the Sky Castle any time, and that would not be good for the expedition. If that happened, the control crystal that Lin Li had would basically be useless. Other than fleeing with his people, there would be no other choice for Lin Li. However, escaping wasn't actually just a matter of surviving. He had taken away the control crystal and the perfect body. Since Osric had such a strong hatred for Lin Li, he definitely would not let Lin Li off easily. The Sky Castle was the product of the High Elves during their pinnacle. This Sky Castle, which belonged to the Immortal King, was the strongest of the seven Sky Castles. Facing the Sky Castle, the Tower of Dusk and the Eternal Furnace, would be too weak to even resist. Hence, even though Lin Li knew it was risky, he had no choice but to take the risk. Taking a so-called gamble would at least allow him to have two choices. However, Lin Li only had one option now, and thus that was no longer a gamble, but a true fight, where he would be putting his life at risk. Even though he had to fight for his life, Lin Li did not reveal any expression. It was as if nothing happened at all. Otherwise, he would probably scare the people of the Brilliant Shrine and Rotterdam Kingdom off. No matter what, at least things had not worsened to the point of being unsalvageable. That was considered giving Lin Li a chance to survive too. It all depended on whether he could grasp it or not. Once he lost that chance, there would be no way he could turn it around in the future. If he could use it well, he could also gain huge benefits that others could never imagine. Returning to the expedition's resting place, Archbishop Martin and Donald each arranged their teams and then went to look for Lin Li again. Master Felic, the expedition still needs some time to rest and recuperate. Do you think we should take this time to discuss the next step of the exploration? Archbishop Martin had taken his hats off to Lin Li at this point. Besides, Lin Li was the son of the Holy Light, hence Archbishop Martin almost sounded like he was asking Lin Li for instructions. On the other hand, Although Donald from the Rotterdam Kingdom was remaining silent, he was clearly waiting for Lin Li's opinion. After exploring the 36 magic towers just now, the Tower of Dusk had already proven their importance in the exploration, even though he did not say anything. Deep down, he still had no choice but to put aside the pride he had as a resident of the Rotterdam Kingdom for the time being. Get ready as soon as possible. We will be exploring the central tower next. Lin Li stated his opinion very simply. During the previous exploration of the 36 magic towers, 
He did not split the spoils with the two forces. One reason was that he was not impressed by the spoils, and another reason was that he wanted to leave them with no reason to oppose his opinion. As expected, Archbishop Martin and Donald did not have any opposing opinions to his suggestion for the following exploration. The brilliant shrine had no major problems, but the situation was worse for the Rotterdam Kingdom. With advanced recovery potions, the wounded recovered quickly, but the alchemy colossuses took a long time to repair. After all, they were not as competent as Angelano. Donald hesitated for a moment before finally saying to Lindley with an awkward expression, President Fulick, our alchemy colossuses seem to be severely damaged. We would need a few days to repair all of them. Do you think you can get the short metallurgist to help us with the repair? The Rotterdam Kingdom had alchemy as its foundation, yet they had to ask an outsider to help repair their alchemy colossuses. Others would probably laugh their heads off at that. However, Donald had no choice. After a series of intense battles, the damage done to the alchemy colossuses was huge, and while the problem of the magical crystals had already been resolved during the exploration just now, they could not find any replacements for the damaged parts. Back then, they did not expect there to be so much danger in the Sky Castle. Hence, they did not prepare many spare parts for the alchemy colossuses. It was no longer a matter of the time needed for the repair. If they did not have any other solutions now, the metallurgists of the Rotterdam Kingdom's team would have to rob Peter to pay Paul by completely dismantling a few alchemy colossuses and placing their parts in the other alchemy colossuses. If they were to do that, they would definitely reduce their strength due to the lack of alchemy colossuses. Secondly, they could not guarantee that the alchemy colossuses they repaired would return to their normal performance standards. Actually, Donald did not really want to go to the central tower, which had already been explored because there was nothing worth taking the risk for. He would rather achieve his goal before deciding to explore or retreat. The reason that he made such a request was mainly because he wanted to tell Lindley that he was not disagreeing with him, but it was just a difficult task. He did not believe that the ridiculous dwarf metallurgist would be able to repair the badly damaged alchemy colossuses without sufficient spare parts. However, with his increasing hunch that Osric was difficult to deal with, how could Lindley possibly let go of such a good group of cannon fodder? He more or less, cared about his ties with the brilliant shrine, but he didn't care about the people of the Rotterdam kingdom at all. Hence, after hearing Donald's words, Lindley didn't give the other party any chance at all. He simply responded to the literal meaning of his words and smilingly said, you're being too polite, Master Donald. We're cooperative partners and we ought to help each other. Don't worry, I'll get someone to repair your damaged alchemy colossuses. The performance will definitely be just as good as new. Donald didn't really have any particular feelings about Lin Lis' reply. It was one thing to help them with the repairs, and another thing to repair the alchemy colossuses successfully. The alchemy colossuses that had been damaged in the battle this time were not simply paralyzed like before. Instead, they were severely damaged from inside out and there was simply no solution other than to replace the parts. Hence, Donald nodded with a grateful expression and said, thank you very much. I'll go ahead and make the arrangements so that your people can go over and repair them. After Donald left, Archbishop Martin didn't stay behind for long, either. Knowing that they would be exploring the central tower next, he bade farewell to Lindley and returned to make preparations for entering the central tower. After the two of them left, Linley turned to look at the center of the sky castle and squinted at the majestic tower that he had once set foot in. He stroked his chin and thought to himself that he had to go all out this time. However, if he made it through, he would truly gain control over the sky castle, which was a battle fortress that would never fall. Even if he had to put his life on the line, it would be worth it. The Tower of Dusk was now known as the top tier force in the breezy plains that no one dared to belittle. However, with the foundation of the Tower of Dusk, they seemed to have reached the highest status they could rise to, and it seemed impossible to go a step further. They could at most expand their business and earn more money, but those measures were no longer able to help raise the status of the Tower of Dusk. It was almost as good to say that they had reached a bottleneck. In fact, the status of the Tower of Dusk now was actually the limit that the vast majority of forces in the entire world of Anril could reach. Simply put, the limit was the so-called supreme royal power, and it was impossible for most of the forces to override royalty. Although Linley had reached the sanctuary realm and could be said to be at the pinnacle of Anril where he could ignore the existence of royal authority, neither Linley nor the Tower of Dusk could truly be above the royal authority. In Anril, only the two major forces, the Supreme Council and the Brilliant Shrine, could truly override the royal authority and even influence the entire world. The Darkness Shrine was only at the borderline, with the heritage that they had accumulated over thousands of years and the support of countless believers of light. The Brilliant Shrine stood at the peak of Anril. However, the Tower of Dusk, 
could not follow in their footsteps, they did not have that much time to accumulate and form a faith, and it was impossible for Linley to advocate any doctrines, either. The Supreme Council was founded by Garesco, who was known as the God of Mages. At the same time, it was also supported by three mythical figures, who had participated in the rebellion at the end of the Dark Age. It had also established the Guild of Magic System in Anril. Hence, the Supreme Council's position in Anril was naturally irreplaceable, and they could not be replicated. It could be said that without any special development opportunities, the Tower of Dusk would never be able to override the royal authority or decide the development direction of the world like the Brilliant Shrine and the Supreme Council could. However, an opportunity to break through the bottleneck of development had now appeared, which was the Sky Castle right before Linley. Although the acquisition of the Sky Castle would not cause the status of the Tower of Dusk to suddenly reach the level of the Brilliant Shrine and the Supreme Council, it was an essential foundation. One could imagine the massive storm that would be stirred up in Anril when the Sky Castle appeared above the Tower of Dusk. With the Sky Castle, the Tower of Dusk would be able to truly break away from the royal authority in the future of its development and then grow into a powerful force that was above the royal authority. That was the advantage that the Sky Castle could give the Tower of Dusk which was absolutely incomparable to any amount of wealth. To Lin Lee, owning the Sky Castle would allow him to appear like a powerful force when he sealed the space-time rifts in the future. He could completely allow the mages of the Tower of Dusk to contribute as well. Owning a powerful conquering Magath in the Sky Castle would allow the occupants of the Sky Castle to increase their strength to an unimaginable level. It would be an exaggeration to call it a level that was nearing the gods, but it would at least allow every mage to exert legendary level power. There were now at least hundreds of mages in the Tower of Dusk's Mage Legion. Other than that, there were nearly 1,000 registered mages in the Tower of Dusk, which would definitely increase together with the appearance of the Sky Castle. Under the massive power of the conquering Magath, having 1,000 mages would be tantamount to having 1,000 legendary mages. The combat power that they could exert would probably make sanctuary powerhouses seem inferior. The mages from the Mage Legion alone would definitely be of great help to Lin Lee when he was sealing the Spastime Rifts. Lin Lee shook his head slightly and put those thoughts in the back of his mind for the time being. If he couldn't get past Osric, those thoughts would only be unrealistic delusions. You wovels up on November, L, B, I, calm. After waiting for about an hour or so, Angelano finally returned while cursing angrily. He had gone to the Rotterdam's team to help them fix the alchemy colossuses. Clearly, as a guru-level metallurgist, he was incredibly upset that Lin Lee had asked him to repair the garbage like alchemy colossuses that were worse than children's toys. Needless to say, the metallurgists of the Rotterdam had to have been terribly chided by him. The dumbfounded Donald was watching the alchemy colossuses that were going through various tests from the spot where the team of the Rotterdam kingdom was. There was not a single trace of joy on his face at all, even though he had already seen that funny dwarf's alchemical techniques before. He was shocked again this time. The degree of damage done to the alchemy colossuses this time was different from before. The difference was like that between a patient and a dead person, and the alchemy techniques that Angelana used were undoubtedly already at the level where he could revive the dead. Damn it, how could such a freak appear among the dwarves? who are only good at smelting iron. Even till now, Donald still did not know exactly what Angelano's origin was. Although he had taken the opportunity to strike up a conversation with Angelano just now, he only ended up getting chided. Hence, he could only judge from Angelano's height that he was a dwarf, be it Donald or the other people of the Rotterdam. No one found Angelano to be amusing and funny anymore. Instead, they felt that he was rather terrifying. The other party's alchemical technique had exceeded their knowledge, and that was definitely something that they had to fear. However, no matter what, the alchemy colossuses had already been repaired, and Donald had no excuse to voice his objection. After getting the test results of the repaired alchemy colossuses, Donald had no choice but to order the team to prepare for entering the central tower. After everything was ready, the expedition set off again, and made their way towards the central tower of the Sky Castle. During their journey, they did not encounter any more obstacles and managed to arrive in front of the main gate of the central tower rather smoothly. President Felix, how do we open the gates of the central tower? I remember that Archbishop Martin seems not to have the keys to the central tower. Donald once again tried to get Lin Lee to drop the idea of exploring the central tower. Archbishop Martin was also put on the spot. He turned to look at Lin Lee and said, Master Felix, I don't have the key to the gate. However, Lin Lee did not answer them. Instead, he walked up the steps in front of the gate then reached out and gave the opulent gates a gentle push, after which they opened slowly in front of everyone. Seeing that the gates were opened effortlessly by Lin Lee, everyone behind him beamed with joy. If they could really enter from the main gate, 
that would naturally mean that they would encounter fewer magic gears and traps. However, Linley was much more worried. Clearly, Osric had already prepared a mysterious welcoming ceremony for himself and the rest. However, Linley did not hesitate, nor did he explain anything to Archbishop Martin and Donald. During desperate times, he would still have to fight and break through even if there was a huge trap ahead. The expedition slowly passed through the gate and stepped into the hall of the first floor of the central tower. The hall was extremely spacious, and it did not look crowded at all even though so many of them had entered. However, when the last person of the expedition team entered the hall, the gates that were opened easily closed automatically with a bang. The sudden change had given the expedition a huge shock. However, before they could send someone to inspect the condition of the gate, they saw that the space around them was suddenly becoming warped, and all the surroundings gradually became blurred. There's a magic trap. Many of them shrieked involuntarily. Fortunately, they had been through long-term elite training, and thus did not panic. Instead, they immediately kept their guard up. However, despite the change, Lin Lee did not seem surprised at all. Clearly, it was Osric's tactic, and it would only be truly strange if there was nothing of the sort instead. Soon, the warp space gradually became clear again, but everything around them was no longer the same as before. Just now, they were in the hall on the first floor of the central tower, but they were now in the wilderness, with the sun shining brightly above them. They were stepping on thick weeds beneath their feet, and as far as they could see, all the land around them was barren. Is this an illusion? Indeed, it felt like a fantasy. One moment they were in the central tower of the sky castle, and the next they ended up in the wilderness. However, Linley found it rather familiar. When he first arrived in the sky castle back then, he chose to enter through another method because he could not open the main gates. In the end, he was sent into the Seven Realm Spiral by the Orderly Maze. That seemed to be how it felt. However, Linley remembered that due to the fact that Xiao Hua had devoured a large amount of mana in the Seven Realm Spiral, and also that he had obtained the Control Crystal, the Seven Realm Spiral could no longer be restored. Hence, they probably were not in the Seven Realm Spiral now. This place is the real world. Have we been sent back to Anril? asked Archbishop Martin whose power was at the peak of the legendary level? He had a rich knowledge of the nomological power of the world, and at this moment, he was sensing the nomological power around him, only to discover that everything here was real. Donald from the Rotterdam also had the same feeling as Archbishop Martin at this moment. He immediately had a peculiar expression on his face, and he said to Lindley with a look of amusement, President Felix, seems like we have been sent out of the Sky Castle. I think we can try to explore again, but it would be better to find the lost item of the Rotterdam Kingdom and the item that Archbishop Martin wants before we try exploring the Sky Castle. Although they had been sent out, Donald didn't think it was a big deal. They would at most have to make another trip to the Sky Castle. However, he wanted to take the rare opportunity to voice his opinion and let the crowd help him complete the goal of this exploration first. The Archbishop was also a bit tempted when he heard Donald's words. The magic traps of the central tower were not that easy to break so he might as well achieve his goal first. However, due to the ties he had with Lin Lee, he was too embarrassed to make that request like Donald did. However, at this moment, Conoris, who was beside Lin Lee sneered and said, you guys had better think about how to overcome this. Things are not as simple as you think. This isn't Anril. Are you kidding me? This isn't Anril. Don't think that everyone else is a fool. This place clearly has the nomological power of Anril. If it's not, explain to me why that's the case. Prince Camber interjected. He was already displeased with the Tower of Dusk, and he naturally wouldn't miss the opportunity to mock them at this moment. However, Camber's mocking did not have any effect, as no one from the Tower of Dusk bothered to answer him. After hearing Conor's words, Linley felt a little surprised, and he turned to ask, Do you know where this is? Linley also knew that this was definitely not Anril, as Osric wouldn't be so kind as to simply send them back to Anril. However, as someone in the Sanctuary Realm, he could not find the difference between the world laws of this place and Anril. That made him feel surprised. Conoris raised his arm, stretched his hand out and pointed in a certain direction. He said, look at that mountain over there. Does it look a little familiar? Linley was not the only one. Archbishop Martin and Donald, as well as everyone from the expedition, all looked in the direction that Conoris was pointing in. However, there were not many people who could actually see anything, and Linley also took a while to observe before hesitantly saying, it does seem a bit familiar. Could it be the Jojori Peak of Alana? No, I seem to remember that it's different from before. There should be a deep rift in the middle. That's right. Do you know about the legend about the rift in Jojori Peak? Conoris asked, after which he looked around. Without waiting for their answers, he said, at the end of the Dark Age, Garesco fought one of the High Elves' sanctuary powerhouses in the war to liberate the Felon Kingdom. When the other party was running away, he used a wind blade to slash the other party, 
leaving a great rift in the middle of the Jojori Peak at the same time. You mean, we are in Alana now during the end of the Dark Age. You mean the Alana 1,300 years ago. Lin Li finally heard the answer in Kanora's story. However, he found it unbelievable. Could it be that they had been sent to Anro 1,300 years ago? If it weren't for his knowledge of Conoris, Lin Li would have definitely thought that the latter had gone mad. Time traveling was something that only one of the five dragon aspects, the Dragon of Time, could do. However, even the dragon aspect could only go back in time and observe. It could not actually descend to a certain dimension, let alone teleport such a large number of people back to more than 1,300 years ago. Lin Li, who understood Conoris well, could not believe that information, let alone Archbishop Martin and the others. However, due to the fact that he was considering Lin Li's face, Archbishop Martin did not show it too obviously. However, the people of the Rotterdam did not care about that. The more they listened to Conoris, the more exaggerated they found him to be. Donald immediately lost it. He asked, time travel. Even the gods can't affect the flow of time and space. What magic trap can send us to over 1,300 years ago in a flash? Whether that's the case or not, since we're already here, let's explore and see. No matter where we are, we still have to find a solution to leave. Seeing that Donald was about to argue with the people of the Tower of Dusk, Archbishop Martin frantically stepped forward to interject. Indeed, regardless of whether or not Conoris was telling the truth, they still had to find a way to leave even if it was just an illusion. Hence, no one objected to Archbishop Martin's suggestion. However, they were in the wilderness, and there was still some disagreement on where to go. After thinking for a while, Linley pointed his finger in a random direction, and said, let's go over there. If this is really Alana, that should be where Alana City is. Let's explore there first. Alana City was currently the royal capital of the Felon Kingdom, hence, it was definitely different from the Alana City of over 1,300 years ago. However, regardless of which Alana City it was, it would all be clear once they found it and took a look. Of course, Lin Li did not think that they had really been transported to the world of over 1,300 years ago, though he also longed to be able to take part in the famous battles that occurred at the end of the Dark Age. He also wanted to see Garesco, who was known as the God of Mages, with his own eyes. However, those were matters that probably could not be done by gods either. Hence, in Lin Li's opinion, the space that they were in now was very likely to be similar to the Seven Realm Spiral, which was a powerful magical domain. However, the laws were not singular like in the Seven Realm Spiral. Back when they were in the Seven Realm Spiral, the scene of the last realm was set up as the legendary Sierra Leone Forest. The expedition started to head towards Alana City, but they stopped again after covering a short distance because they were standing on a hill, and they could already see that there was actually a city that looked somewhat similar in the distance. They reckoned that it should be where Alana City was. However, it didn't seem appropriate for them to be in Alana City, regardless of whether it was the present era or over 1,300 years ago. If they were in present-day Alana, their appearance would definitely cause tension and perhaps even diplomatic disputes in the Felon Kingdom. After all, the team was composed of members from the Brilliant Shrine in the Felon Kingdom. If they were in Alana City of over 1,300 years ago, the expedition should not just go over there. More than 1,300 years ago, Anril was still being dominated and ruled by the High Elves. Besides, this was the territory of High Lord Osric. Hence, that would definitely bring them huge trouble, or even death. Although both of their worries seemed rather absurd, no one was certain of what the current situation was. Hence, they would have to be a bit more careful. After discussing the situation with Archbishop Martin and the others, Lindley decided to send some of the members out to reconnoiter to prepare for what they might encounter next. Reconnaissance was definitely the forte of bandits, but there were none in the teams of the Brilliant Shrine and the Tower of Dusk. The people of the Rotterdam Kingdom finally had a chance to show their abilities. Without consulting Donald, Prince Canber immediately commanded, three of his bandit subordinates to start reconnoitering. The three bandits, he called had extremely sullen expressions, but they did not dare to disobey Prince Canber's orders. Hence, they left the team sulkily. The three bandits were at level 17 and level 18. Hence, reconnoitering was not actually that difficult for them. However, if it was a trap, leaving the team was no different from getting killed. After the three bandits left, the expedition stopped at the same place, and waited for a response. After about two hours, a bandit suddenly emerged from the shadows. He was actually the strongest of the three, but at this moment, he looked rather disheveled. Clearly, the reconnoitering was not successful. Henry, what's going on? Where are the two of them? Seeing that his subordinate had returned in such a pathetic condition, Prince Canber had a look of displeasure. Your Highness, 
the two of them were captured by a high elf, answered Henry, the only bandit who made it back. While speaking, he wiped blood off the corners of his lips. What? High elf? There are high elves here. Donald and Canber were not bothered about their underlings being caught. Instead, they noticed that Henry had mentioned a high elf. After the end of the Dark Age, the high elves in Anril were basically extinct. Even the Tree of Eternity was ruined by Garesco. Even though there were still some high elves that would occasionally appear in some of the ruins, they had basically been transformed into undead creatures. You mean a high elven lich? Donald asked. However, the bandit Henry shook his head and swallowed his saliva. He continued, no, not an undead creature, but a high elf. The three of us were going to sneak into the city, but as soon as we arrived at the city gate, we were discovered by a high elf. Lowly humans, are you gathering here to rebel? A voice suddenly sounded in the sky before the bandit Henry could finish. The expedition on the ground looked up, only to see a high elf, who was dressed luxuriously and holding a dark moon staff, staring at them coldly from above. Someone has sent himself here. We don't have to reconnoiter. Linless lips curled, and he pointed at the sky where he grasped at nothing. A giant hand that was condensed with mana appeared out of thin air, above the high elf's head to pull it down. Filthy humans, how dare you offend my race's might? Do you want to go extinct? Facing the giant hand of mana, the high elf could not retaliate at all. He was pulled downwards, but the pride on his face didn't diminish at all. Lin Lee and the others were speechless at the high elf's words. Everyone knew that in Anril, the high elves had been exterminated long ago, and even the Tree of Eternity had been destroyed. However, the high elf in front of him seemed to be clueless about it, as he was acting haughty and impressive. Seeing the behavior of the high elf, the hearts of the people sank. Had they really been transported back to over 1,300 years ago? Let me ask you, where is this? Who is the leader? Lin Lee questioned the high elf. Pathetic human, what right do you have to question me? It seems that those previous lessons have not yet taught you the proper respect you should show to my race. Although the high elf could not struggle to break free and knew that Lin Lee was stronger, his tone was still as harsh as before. Ufa Lucy, dig out what we need to know from his head using any means you prefer. Seeing how sharp tongued the high elf was, Lin Lee didn't bother wasting time on him and just left it to Ufa Lucy to come up with a solution. Ufa Lucy was a lich who was at the peak of the legendary realm, and he had reached the pinnacle of playing with souls. Upon hearing Lin Lee's instructions, he immediately went forward and grabbed the high elf before dealing with him in a corner. The high elf gritted his teeth and remained silent but soon he began shrieking in horror. Not long after, Ufa Lucy dragged the high elf, who was almost suffocating, towards Lin Lee. He said, Master, according to him, this is indeed Alana City, and the leader now is High Lord Osric. Upon hearing this, everyone couldn't help but gasp. Did they really time travel? Why had High Lord Osric appeared? Everyone knew that Osric was the High Lord more than 1,300 years ago. It was over for them, this time. They had gone back to over 1,300 years ago and landed in the territory of Butcher Osric. Not to mention going back, surviving itself was a problem. In this era, peak legendary powerhouses were impressive. Osric's magic legion was composed of plenty of legendary powerhouses, while High Lord Osric was a sanctuary powerhouse, who could destroy them easily. The piece of news threw everyone into confusion, even Lin Lee lost his usual composure. If he wanted to deal with Osric, he would be dealing with Osric's ghost and not the Osric who was in his prime, right? Ask him what day today is. Lin Lee suddenly thought of something. Although Osric was a sanctuary powerhouse, he seemed to have been seriously injured due to something in the later stages, and then he started to build a grand and majestic mausoleum for himself. If it was the time for Osric to build his mausoleum now, perhaps he wouldn't create trouble for them. Ufa Lucy tossed the high elf beneath his feet and crouched down to squeeze his forehead. After a moment, he said in a strange tone, Master, he said that it's the 17th of May, in the year of 7665 of the Continental Calendar. 7665. Why does it feel a bit different from history? Lin Li was stunned to hear the year. He remembered that the Dark Age ended 6,000 odd years ago. So how did the 7,000 years come about? Conoris suddenly slapped his forehead and said with a face full of excitement, Ha, ah, I know. We did not go back to over 1,300 years ago but this place is indeed the Alana city of over 1,300 years ago. What do you mean? Lin Lee asked. He was not alone. Archbishop Martin and the rest were also confused by Conor's words. If I guessed correctly, this should be a world created by the immortal king, based on the Alana city of over 1,300 years ago. At the mention of this, even Conor's, who was one of the oldest ancient demons, couldn't help but be amazed. World creation. After all, Linley had stepped into the sanctuary realm, and with his knowledge of the power of the sanctuary realm, he knew that Conoris was not lying. 
The legendary realm was about the comprehension and usage of laws, while the sanctuary realm was about the manipulation and changing of laws. The world was made up of all kinds of laws, so creating laws to the extreme might not necessarily mean that one couldn't create a world. In fact, in myths and legends, true gods often possessed a kingdom of their own creation, and it was considered a world in a sense. As one of the most powerful existences in the history of Anril, the immortal king was said to have power comparable to that of a god. So creating a world of his own did not seem impossible. Only those who could truly create their own laws could break free from the restraint of the world laws and enter the chaos of spastime. Of course, no one could be certain if that was the case or not. Even Conoris who made this guess actually did not have full confidence in it. However, at the same time, everyone did not oppose that statement. After all, it could indeed explain a lot of things. However, Lin Li was still a little worried. According to that high elf, there was an Osric there. So what did that Osric have to do with the Osric of Anril? Despite knowing that a character like Osric could never be replicated, what would be the strength of Osric here? However, no matter what, Lin Li and the rest were secretly relieved that they had not been sent to over 1,300 years ago to face the real Osric. Master Felic, what do you think we should do next? Archbishop Martin asked while wiping the sweat from his forehead that surfaced because of the fright he got. I'm afraid it's not easy to leave the world created by the immortal king. Lin Li frowned and shook his head slightly. He then said to Conoris, Conoris, what do you think of this world? After all, Lin Li had only just stepped into the sanctuary realm. Compared to the immortal king who created the world, there was an infinite gap between them. However, Conoris had once been the ancient demon of deception and conspiracy. He had also also participated in the opening of the Endless Abyss in the first place, so he should have experienced more in that aspect. He updates T and Vel, by, calm, Conoris contemplated for a while, and he said, regarding the matters of this world, I remember that Osric did tell me something about it back then. Thank you for watching Mystic Realms Recap. Please like share and subscribe. Have a great day.